Hi, everyone. Welcome to Fight Net Radio. Lee Honish, Andrew Labashe, Miguel Antonio Barragan. Watch, I can do it in a different order, too. Miguel Antonio Barragan, Andrew Labashe, and Lee Honish. There, see, nobody gets upset. We could do it in alphabetical order. That would take me a lot longer. This show is Fight Net Radio. Go to fightnetradio.media. Check out our website. Uh, and enjoy all the shit we have on there. Uh, on that page, you can find a way to follow FightNet Radio on all its various formats, listen to all the shows. Occasionally, we even do some video. More importantly, you can follow me on social media, FightNet Radio on social media, and of course, the ever-intrepid uh, documentarian we like to call Fight Feed Migs. Uh, follow him at Fight Feed Migs on uh and Instagram on all of his platforms. You can check us all out. Go to fightnetradio.media. You can find all the back episodes or Facebook page. It's actually a pretty decent laid out page. And even a picture of our producer, Sam Navajero. Uh, all of that is available to you. With that said, this is the segment of the show where we attempt to connect with the audience, but truthfully, uh, you, the audience, probably don't know as much as we, the reporters. Just saying it out loud for the rest of the room. I'm doing the thought bubble routine today. So I'll start with you, Miguel. How is your universe and how is Las Vegas? Well, I happen to not be in Las Vegas at the moment. I happen to be in West Jordan, Utah. Uh, one of my BFFs uh, has a daughter, and she's uh, B- two Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> yes. Ho, 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 ho. First of all, how old are you that you said BFF? Second, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to reach out to a younger audience, guys. Are you going to let that one go? Because I'm sure as hell not hey, letting the BFF thing go. Is it? Is it best friends forever? Yes. Is that, it is. Yes. Is that what it is? <laughs> I have a seventeen-year-old daughter. That's how I know BFF. I've seen it. I'm so glad I know that that is truly what it means now. All right. Very nice. Very- Omg. Lol. What are you yes. doing? Lol. Exclamation point. God. Hashtag. Bring your man card, bro. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Even my dog. Oh. Shut up, Max. Yes. Hey, Miguel, out of the gate, strong man. That's strong. Came to the glass on the first one. Yeah, I did right. All right, right so off the you're bat. at your BFFs in UT. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> is he a Mormon or is he like? No, one of, no. That He's means he uh, has I mean, tattoos. We met in California. We we met in I think when we were kids. We we've been friends since we since we were eight. So, and how many tattoos uh, does this individual have? Zero. What? Like my, like myself. I call yep. bullshit. No, one hundred percent. All right. So, well, uh, uh, well, any, enjoy any Utah. Toronto. What? More uh, importantly, drive safely, Miguel. Yes, I absolutely will. All right. I will fair my way back home tomorrow morning. But anyway, yeah. it is a lovely weekend so far. It has. What's the temperature like in uh, Utah? Um, well, it kind of rained yesterday, uh, like a little bit, like those, like a little bit of thunderstorms. But as of right now, we're at 72. All right. Well, that's is nice. Friend, uh, is your friend's name, is your friend's name Pablo Chacon? Jesus <laughs> Christ. No, I, it is not. It's so right fucking it. It hilarious. I'm still, I'm still I'm going so with that. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Did you just go full Vinny Barbarino, Barbarino there? I'm so confused. Yeah, yeah. It's the uh, that, that was really good. In a split second. Uh, well, let's check in on our family man in the Bay Area. Shut up, man. Who's now been relegated to the backyard to talk about Bob. <laughs> Hey Lee, that's what happens when you say eight thirty in the fucking morning. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, when you have fifteen kids, yeah, don't wake the fucking kids is probably gonna, the order of I'm the gonna, day. No, it's don't wake the mama lion. Fuck the Whatever. kids. It's the mama it's all lion. Relative at that point. <laughs> oh, this fucking dog. I'm gonna beat this dog. Do you guys hear the dog barking? Yeah, but it's okay. I, I hate like Max. The dog yeah, I hate the distance. I like I hate the dog you. angle a lot. Ma- I do. Be it really brings it like the family man through. 
I didn't oh. think he was going to be so loud. Sorry, guys. I didn't think that was going to happen. Now nah, we're doing okay. good. Ah, we're doing good, Lee. Which we call, but yeah, eight thirty, a little early. So I got out of the house to let them let it be a little quiet in there. I can't get loud in there right now. No, I'd wake everyone up. Understandable. What's going on in the Lapache household? I mean, with the COVID variant going on, uh, are we still kicking our daughter back into the high school population at, as well as your kids? I mean, Junior's too uh, tough for COVID variants, let's... but the rest of the house. You know they're a little they're a little soft. Yeah, um, uh, Dora is a senior. I don't really want her to miss too much more. Um, so if she's good and the school's good and open, then yeah, she's she can go to school if she wants. She just, you know, got to keep her distance, wear a mask, wash her hands, you know, and just don't hopefully bring that does, shit she home. doesn't. Did you give her orders? Oh, don't bring that hey, shit home. I never took a day off. I've been out there working in San Francisco majority of the time. Um, you know, I, I'm at risk of bringing it home too. So I can't knock her or say anything like that to her. Cause I never took a day off on, on this week, whole thing. She, she starts back at she uh, flag already work is, next week. She's already, she already has been. You're absolutely right on that. That, that, you know that, that because I don't get to it. spend my birthday with my daughter. She's in band camp, which is ridiculous. It just means you go to yeah. school all day and sweat like a pig. Um, yes, very good. I know. Very good. Yes, right? that is, I, that's actually, all that it you was. You know what? Yep. Here's the really cool fun fact for those of you going, why are you doing this? Because I've been hipping and up to color guard for four straight years. <laughs> Our daughters both were in color guard. They're both the same yep. age. And to me, it's hilarious. I mean, the biggest news of the week, I, I guess I have two news updates for everybody. Number one, my daughter drove me for the first time. She just got her car. Got her car. Uh, it was a all-wheel drive Prius. So she's the kid at the school with the new car uh, for her birthday coming up uh, in five days, actually. Uh, here's the other one. All right. All the white people who listen to the show get very excited. This is the biggest news to hit Fight Net Radio. <laughs> I, and I'm going to say attempt, all right, uh, because, you know, you never know how these things go with me. I'm going to start dating again oh. after a few years, all right? That's not a shocker. But she's white, Andrew. She's white. And therefore, I'm officially putting a moratorium on me bashing white people on fight net radio and if this works out that means historically for the rest of the run on fight net radio i will never again bash white people <laughs> for being stupid and or white yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. completely fair it's like a get, get your stopwatch ready guys is 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 Caleb Plant in the news today? Oh, oh God, yeah, no, I'm just kidding, so it's going to be just... tough on me. It's going to be really tough on me. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you why this is That's going to last about a half an hour. Sorry, you fighting that. The, I know it's going to last. You. Right. Here's the other Get funny the part. Stopwatch is ready. Right. Get the stopwatch is ready. <laughs> Wait, this is the funny part. In my attempts to not bash white people, uh, this is a fun fact about her that I just recently found out. I mean, like within the last 30 minutes of getting ready to do this show, she's a boxing fan. She actually dated a boxer. She's like, oh, you do a show. I went, oh, no. I said, do you want to hear today's show? Because I'm going to say this because she's probably listening. So I'm going to take a little personal time. I know that our producer, Sam Navajaro, doesn't like it when I do this moment. Uh, baby, if you break up with me, I will bash white people to a bludgeoned ground and know that that will be on you for the rest of the day. Yeah, no pressure. No, no pressure. pressure. No pressure. <laughs> 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 and Andrew is completely correct. Caleb, New Caleb News is a thing today. If this is your first time, follow us on Facebook. Follow us everywhere that we go. Uh, follow everything that we do. By the way, since I'm not putting the video out, that was her. You guys want to see her? You can see her. I'm not going to put the video out. This is her. Uh, that's her. Come on. Tell me you guys aren't slight. Very nice. <laughs> yes. Very, <laughs> very <laughs> nice. You did well. You did well. You did well. Or carrying a gun. How is that fun oh. for you? So, so she's saying is what you're saying. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, you guys just enjoy the amusement of, yeah, here we go again. Uh, so I, I'm 
already seen the email from <laughs> Sam Navajero. That occupied exactly four minutes of the show, Lee. Uh, it made it under the five-minute marker. Uh, and it when... when might be another side, yellow card. Right. Might be just an... I don't know. Your, yep. Here's the funny part. He doesn't send that on the group text. He sends it directly to me. And because I'm up <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning working, which is like tomorrow or yesterday in Australia... He has no shame when he doesn't like a show just calling me to tell me how I fucked up. So he's a great producer. Uh, I just wish we could get him into a fight or something and help him out a little bit more. With that said, let's talk boxing. This show is about boxing. Go to fightnetradio.media. Uh, all of us collectively are lifelong fans. Uh, those two guys over there, uh, the one on the left or the right, I don't know which side he's sitting on. Uh, believe it or not, Andrew. He done has done the boxing he has till he got hit. Uh, as yeah, I, that sucked. feel free to go check out our go check out my exploits. I'm the only one of us documented for doing stupid shit. Uh, Miguel, did you, uh, did you ever have a dream or a moment of I want to do boxing? The boxing. Uh, <laughs> I want I want to train UFC. No. Um, no, I, I didn't. That was just a, a kid, basically. <laughs> and my dad just kind of held the pads for me. And I was like, okay, this is how it's going to go then. You know, when you're a kid, you don't have any perspectives. They're just like, okay, this is how it is. This is how it is. So that, that was the decision. Speaking of that, how, that how is Junior's fight game right now, Dad? Uh, he's doing good. Um, still, I haven't sparred him or put him in a real gym. Or I'm like what just Miguel just uh, described is kind of what Junior's relationship to boxing is right now. Um, so... No, we haven't pressed uh, any pressure on him. We haven't, uh, I haven't went to any gyms yet. It's going to be kind of hard. That's what I mean, I'm, I'm honestly, is, I'm going to be doing. Really let him box. I mean, let's be really yes. brutally honest. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, she would. Um, you had to talk uh, right now. Right now, of course. Really, oh we had to talk many years. I'm ago. actually excited. <laughs> um. But right now, where we currently live, there's no gyms. And, you know, I drive a lot during the day, man. And it's like, darn, do you really see yourself coming out of traffic to get your son to jump right back in it and drive, you know, 30 miles or so back up the road to, to try to go to a gym? So that's yeah. what I'm really uh, going, dealing with right now with Junior. I got to make sure he really likes it before I make this commitment. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. Um, this isn't yes. soccer down the street. No, no, I hear you. No, right? no, no. This isn't a pair of cleats and shin guards. This is the real deal. It de yeah, uh, definitely. It's, it's some of these sports that are outside of school. Yeah, definitely. You, the parents are way, I'm not going to say more committed, but yeah, it takes a little more dedication to get some uh, uh, mat time, some, some sparring, you know, I know people drive from the Bay area to, to the central Valley just to get sparring in for their kids. Um, that's a, that's a weekend trip, right? Well, what'd you guys do? So we went and got sparring, sparring, you know, <laughs> you, you would think it's going to be like a tournament or something, you know what I mean? Not fucking just some practice. Um, so, so yeah, it's, uh, the sport, it, boxing isn't easy. You know what I mean? Maybe if I would have moved to a maybe Modesto or Stockton, it might be a little bit easier. I know there's some clubs out there, but unfortunately, I'm in Tracy. I'm going to have to do a little more digging. I knew, I know I had one young man out of Tracy that was doing good in the amateurs. I seen a, a little um, news clip on him in, on Facebook, but uh, I don't know if he has a gym in Tracy. So I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, my mother always had this mentality of, well, the reason you committed to jujitsu, wrestling, boxing, and all the other stuff you did is because you did it on your own. I'm like, uh, okay. Or you didn't want to see me getting my face bashed in. I mean, she tried that when I got into drums in my twenties, she's like, but you'll appreciate it more because you bought them and paid for the lesson. I'm like, or you didn't want me playing drums in the house. <laughs> <laughs> just like, didn't want to body body you know, this is a parent, right if my daughter said you know what dad i want to go into kickboxing i'm like no you can do it when you leave the house i'm like i there is no way that anybody in their sane mind under the age of 18 should i unless you started like junior when you were young going yeah i want to get hit that sounds like fun <laughs> yeah it's not it, wait, let me confirm it. Just because I have a high threshold for pain doesn't mean I dig it. It's still getting hit at the end of the day, which uh, that's, turns, 
that's what counts. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what separates the, the men from the boys right there is when you finally start getting punched in your face. Yeah. yeah. You start getting bloody lips so and bloody noses many. and you're like, wait, what's going on? Right. I mean, I think the most famous case for the casual fan is what happened to Ronda Rousey? She got hit yeah. hard. A lot of times. A lot of times. And someone told her she could box instead yes. of what she's good at, which is <laughs> judo. Um. I don't, you know, I, I hear you, Andrew. Well, thank God you haven't taken over just training him because historically in boxing, a father training his son always works out to a happy ending. Always. I mean, <laughs> always. They usually have a good relationship, right? That's, yeah, that's what I no, see. Great. <laughs> right. <They're> great. <laughs> Nothing but shits and giggles in the fucking gym there. Uh, <laughs> That doesn't create a lifetime of issues. All right, let's move yes. forward. We do talk about boxing on the show after we get all that horse shit over with. And this is where it starts. Today, we'll be using fight news because they're still in business. Did you know that Billy sold his website <laughs> pound for pound on a side note? Oh, no, I, I did not. I you not. Here's pound for pound boxing, right, Andrew? Hasn't changed. Pound, yes. the number four pound boxing.com, correct? Check this yes, out. sir. He sold the website to a gym in Texas. Mm. Pound for pound boxing dot com is a no more for the boxing news. No longer can I bash the bill. I'm <laughs> oh, oddly wow. Yeah. I don't I There's don't know how I feel about coming. it. coming. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you what I think. I think we did it to him, Andrew, and we should feel guilty. <laughs> What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, Lee. Too much, too much yeah, credit for being douchey. <laughs> Very good at being douchey. How do you express that? I the reason I'm sending the episode to her today is I'm like, how do I express my douchey side? Oh, I know. I'll send you a fight net radio copy. That will explain my dark douchey side. <laughs> Welcome to Fight Night Radio. Let me explain everybody's role because it might be your first time listening and you might become a regular listener. Remarkable. I think we're picking up one listener, Andrew. That's my goal today. I want her to walk away from this going, oh, yeah, I want to date him. <laughs> Sorry, that actually made me laugh. Let's uh, talk about boxing. Uh, Miguel Antonio Barragan is sort of our general Jack Russell Terrier of all things boxing and MMA and a complete historian on the topic. Go visit him at Fight Fiend Migs, where he has done a 464 part in-depth <laughs> Muhammad Ali background and video. It's longer than the Snyder Cut. Andrew Labache, of course, lifetime fan. All of us are family guys who were brought up in the sport of boxing. Uh, Andrew actually did the amateur boxing, the boxing until Andrew got the hit. And I still have it in my brain that I want to fight. I don't know what that's about. Eh. Let's talk of the boxing, shall we? We start on July 26th, as my screen went strangely dark. Uh, the odds tighten up between Pacquiao and Spence. We are just a few weeks away from you guys changing your opinion about how great Manny Pacquiao is and Manny Pacquiao getting one step closer to fighting Floyd Mayweather and making me right two years later, maybe three years later. Jesus Christ. No, you're, we're talking more like seven years, Lee. No, they Has fought it been in, that long since the fight, it, Andrew? Well, is, yes, is from, yes, yes, yes. Is it from when the fight was or from when he predicted From when the fight rematch? was, because I said so right after things, the fight no? and the shoulder bullshit. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's been a long time in the making, but you know, <laughs> you know, he's one win away. He is yeah, one win away from thing, from Andrew, waking up that monster like named right. Money I Mayweather. Right. That's the truth. WBC IBF welterweight champion Errol Spence Jr. opened as a massive four to one favorite at Bet MGM. Hey, you guys. Last yes. Mm. The fights in Las Vegas, do you think this will have any determining factor on the outcome? Do you think Las Vegas is begging more for Spence to get to what Spence says, the torch passed to him, which is a fucking complete joke, but whatever. The torch passed to him? Or do you think Vegas wants Mayweather Pacquiao 2 off Pacquiao's win over Spence? Well, here's the question I really have. 
is the COVID variant going to shut this fucking fight down and make it a closed fight in an arena? I don't, I don't know if uh, the country can go for a shutdown so quick. So I think this one makes it, even though it might, it, the numbers go up. But if they continue to go, we're going to wait a lot longer to shut shit down, I think, on this one. If you notice, Lee, nobody's really mad at anybody over this one. This is really a, more about a vaccination issue than it is about, about any administration didn't warn us or we weren't prepared or, you know, it just there's, there's no one mad. So I think they wait. They wait it out until until they they truly do have to shut it down because hey, Lee they barely got over. I mean, didn't the eviction thing end last night? Isn't that the big news with the, in, yeah at the end of July? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so they, they're barely you know their homeowners are barely getting their money back from some of these renters uh, to tell them they're going to have to wait again. I, I don't know if I don't know. It's going to be scary times here though. Yeah, I already know Mask. that part. That's what Andrew Mask and I were talking up. about it before the show. God, I'm so excited about the moratorium being over. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lee's famous again. I've waited so long, <laughs> quietly. They've all come back. Uh, all right, let's talk about the odds for Pacquiao and Spence, which is where we were a minute ago. Uh, two years out of the ring allowed my body to rest, of course. Is he going to say the guy? You guys didn't even you answer my question. To do you my Manny Pacquiao? I haven't tried oh. doing Manny in a while. Listen, yeah, two years ago. No, I, I think we're we're gonna get Spence and I mean we're gonna try to get you know Mayweather and Pacquiao. That's what I think Vegas wants. Vegas could give could give a shit about uh about Errol Spence. I'm sure they don't. I don't give a shit about Errol Spence. I think he's gonna get knocked out. All right, let's skip the article. Now the odds are at two to one. So let's just cut to the chase and find out whether or not I respect either of you in the morning. I start with you, Miguel Antonio Barragan. Have you changed your opinion on the outcome of this fight? And I'm going to give you, wait, I'm going to give you some help this time. Okay. If Vegas truly wants what you say, which is what I agree, and what Manny Pacquiao and the PBC really want, which is for him to fight Floyd Mayweather because it's an ungodly amount of money, um, that means that the decision goes to Pacquiao, short of Mm -hmm. Spence beating him from pillar to post for 12 rounds, which is impossible with Manny Pacquiao. So let's see. If we've changed your opinion at all, how do you see the outcome of the fight? Uh, well, my opinion has absolutely not changed. I still think that Errol Spence is going to take it. Um, you know, considering you know they're in Vegas, I realize that that is going to play a major role. But he is going to be—he's—he's he's going to be clear. I don't think he's going to be able to stop Manny. I think I've said this before, but. He's gonna he's gonna look as though he can. That's how dominant he's gonna be. And I, so I don't think that uh, that he's gonna end up losing a decision. I want to say Spence is gonna take it anyway. But you know there is that part of my, the back of my head that that doubts it because they are in Vegas after all. So uh, as of right now, no. Now you know the fight hasn't come. You know the, the fight is still approaching. Maybe in my opinion will change as the fight approaches and gets closer. But as of right now, I'm still going with Spence. Survey says. Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, soundboard. Oh. Soundboard is broken. Oh, Lee's back with the soundboard again this week. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited already. Everybody buckle up. Andrew, player pass. Player pass. Would you like to phone a friend? 50-50? The, the, you're right. The odds on this are two to one in what? Pacquiao's favor or Spence's favor? Uh, no, they're favor? still in Spence's no, favor. No, Spence's. Spence, yeah. So two to one. So that's like a three-point... Uh, point spread in football. Seriously, two to one. That he's not that. It's a pick favorite. Em. It's officially um, a pick'em. Right. Yeah, right. We're a so, pick so we're a pick'em. We're a pick'em fight. You guys also need to bring into effect. This matters. Who's made more money for Las Vegas? Who shows? Who's made more money for the PBC to, at to, this point? But wait, 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 wait. Will uh, uh, Lee? Who? Who's show? that they'll fight anybody whoever steps up whoever vegas or the promoters tell them to it's pacquiao listen if pacquiao wins he gives vegas the fight if spence wins is there any guarantee that spence fights crawford no no so why would they get why would they want to give him the win have (laughs) manny pacquiao now favorite going into this fight i'm telling you 
This thing is building up. Spence better be nervous about this. Or he better start. You might hear Spence in the next coming weeks talking a lot more about his future plans are more than just about him taking out some old man. Las Vegas needs money. That Pacquiao Mayweather rematch fight makes more money than Crawford Spence. Manny by split decision. Manny Pacquiao. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh oh. Oh, hold on. I wasn't cued for that. Hold on. I wasn't cued for the party horn. Hold on. (laughs) Uh, Wow, what the fuck, Andrew? I really didn't see you changing gears that quickly on me. Wait, curveball. hold on. What a curveball. I thought you were going to It's like a M. Night Shyamalan it. swerve. Right? Like, I, I don't like... I... You guys, you guys, listen. This, uh, everything that Spence has been doing, holding that fight, ransom, the, the Crawford fight, because it's really been him holding it up. All the PBC guys, don't give me this bullshit about it. any of these things ended in negotiations. And all the negotiations with PBC and neither Canelo or Crawford, you are the B-side. The fact that these fighters try to come in and act like they're the A-side is the fucking problem with the negotiating negotiating going on between Canelo, PBC, Crawford, and PBC. So it's always been their fault. So, so no, uh, this... Uh, <laughs> This is gonna get this is gonna get rusty here for for Spence in these final rounds, these championship rounds. Don't be surprised if Las Vegas does what Las Vegas does and gives them he, Manny sweeps them. You know what I mean? Like they, if they might have it a draw going into round eight. How many times has Vegas done that? They know how to do the math. Manny, Freddie Roach, all of these guys know what's on the table. They played this game many times, especially Manny. Manny knows the fucking politics of boxing. He's been involved with them how many times in the Marquez matches and the Timothy Bradley matches. Fuck, even some say in the Jeff Horn matches. He knows about the politics of boxing. It's a point system. You got to win what? They'll give them seven. You win six, you definitely win the fight. Wow. Wait, one more time because I'm so wow. <laughs> Can you say don't get it twisted, Andrew, just for the sound bite? <laughs> it didn't come out natural. We can't Joining do it. us he now on the yeah, Newsmaker organic, line. Hold on. Yeah. Joining us now on the Newsmaker <laughs> line from the studio, Manny Pacquiao. Everybody sing along. We lost them. We, we're not hearing anything, Lee. You're not? Uh, no. no. <laughs> what the hell? It was just dead Did air. Did you get the DJ party horn? No. Nope. So much for a new computer, huh? Hey, you know what? You know what? Are you telling me that the wrong buzzer wasn't there either? <laughs> no, sir. Sir. Oh my God! I'm so pissed Not off at this moment. Oh well, no! I'm gonna fix it right now because I just oh. did three solid jokes, and my humor needs to be felt. Um, <laughs> like I really thought all the sound effects were like working there, and uh, I'm a little bummed out at this moment. So I am gonna stop sharing the screen, and now I'm going to start sharing the screen again and i'm gonna yeah. share sound I'm gonna bump that too sharing. hold on was, uh, I'm gonna go all the jokes like again. A, you're gonna don't be a dick laugh. tease lee don't be a damn dick tease all right hold Give on us a damn. let me rewind all right first of all uh miguel i need you first tell me who you're picking in the fight just say oh, who it is Jesus. errol spence by unanimous decision oh god <laughs> there you go uh there there's that. <laughs> there you go <laughs> okay, uh, Andrew, Andrew, who are you picking in the fight now? Uh, Manny Pacquiao split decision. <laughs> cool, now we're on a roll. Joining us right. in the studio live is Manny Pacquiao. You ask me if you is this the most whorish grab of money in history? <laughs> as, as bad as De La Hoya's? I was going to say, good, uh, good call, Miguel. Good call. We got to match them. Uh, you got to match Oscars to Manny's. 
We uh, might have De La Hoya joining us from the studio. Thank you for that little uh, update about that. And if you're wondering, does that mean we get to hear Oscar sing today? <laughs> get ready, kids. I'm feeling the soundboard today. All right, cool. Uh, you guys all know what I'm picking, and I'm actually looking forward to it. Theoretically, Miguel and I should be getting credentials for that fight. Theoretically. I would hate speaking. to think that I have to buy tickets to go to this fight. I may have already asked someone to go to it already, which is kind of a a difficult thing with the COVID thing, the way it is. Speaking of Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya restructures his staff. Joining us on the line right now to discuss it is Oscar De La Hoya. E. E. <laughs> Did you know I have employees, bro? <laughs> Yes, Oscar, we knew that you had employees. <laughs> Eric still works here, bro. I didn't know that. You know what he said? Why the fuck are you fighting some Victor Veter, whatever the fuck his name is? That's what he said. And I said, Triller, bro. Triller. Golden Boy promotion. Why am I the only one that thinks that whole sequence is funny? Like, I'm going to stop Oscar De La Hoya and fuck y'all. Well, Golden Boy, we promotion. can't see the screen, Lee. We can't see the screen. Now we're back to you can't see the screen. Now, now we're back to black. Yep. Jesus motherfucking Christ! What is it today with the effects? That's not going to get you, you in the Golden Gate. Do you need to see the screen? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Yeah. Do you need to see? Yeah, the if you're screen? if you're concerned about getting into fights, you should be concerned about getting to the Golden Gate. <laughs> <laughs> show isn't for everybody just the sexy people uh so say it, uh, the beautiful okay people. let's try this with sharing sound all right let's try that how's that can you see the screen now it's better for you guys uh that's a negative negative all right let's try again let's try again we're gonna go with this one and switch window how about now oof still no what the fuck do you really need to see the screen is what I'm starting to think at this point. Well, I, I guess not. All right, just keep it moving. So I either get sound. What's up? Dude, I paid $2,000 for this computer. The least it can do is show you the screen. In fact, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it should blow me in the morning and go make my first <laughs> pot of coffee at $2,000. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not putting it on the computer. I mean, it's a great friend. Uh, it seems to be into the same stuff I'm into. But truthfully, I mean, a little more effort out of this computer would be appreciated. It's starting to remind me of my ex. I'll show. <laughs> That's a good joke. That's a good joke, kids. Uh, Golden Boy Restructures. Golden Boy has announced that David Cherolata something or other will step into the role as chief business officer and equity partner. He joins existing partners Bernard Hopkins. Well, he didn't quit. That's exciting. And Eric Gomez, who's just embarrassed all the time. Uh, Trialt will strategically drive in all TV and stream licensed deals, media and entertainment, marketing, communications. Oh, my God. Listen to this list. He will be in charge of licensing deals, media, entertainment, marketing, communications, corporate development, sponsorship, and co-manage all financial aspects. By the way, that's he's going to run the whole company. Because if you didn't miss it, the only thing he's not doing in that scenario is booking fights. And since they don't have any fighters left, and Oscar is their only fighter at this point, um, this is really literally a press release of Oscar's not going to do what he's doing anymore, and we're going to have David do it. And what we found out over here at Golden Boy, Oscar should have been doing all this shit. That's my take. Anyone? Anyone? All right. So back to the. Uh, so is this about Oscar move working for Triller or someone no, taking over Golden Oscar, Boy? Oscar, somebody's taking over Oscar's shit. Golden is Boy. What's happening? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have to. Lee, Oscar's going to be busy the next few months. He's planning for his comeback. Do you think Oscar really to, did uh, any of this? Wait, this hold is on. a permanent move. Wait, hold on. This is a permanent move. Well, no, 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 Oscar Taylor actually did streaming licenses, media, entertainment, marketing, communications, corporate development, sponsorship, and co-manage all financial aspects of the company. Uh, um, 
No, but that's probably the title that he had for CEO of the company. So now there's a new CEO of the company. And because uh, seriously, you guys, Oscar's plan is two fights and then Canelo or Floyd. So even if Canelo and Floyd say no to the rematches, Oscar's plan is still two fights. He's not going to be in the fucking um, the business side of Golden Boy right yeah. now. He's doing he, paperwork and shit that way. This is his plan. Don't ask. To do it, but that's his plan: is two comeback fights, and then he's calling out a rematch. Miguel, yeah. yes. No, I mean, I, I don't think he did any of this shit to begin with. I mean, like, like what's the name was saying, like, like fucking Andrew was saying, it's just like, I mean, come on, now it's just basically setting, putting this quote unquote title on someone else as opposed to him. But I mean, I'm sure he already had this motherfucker or someone else doing the work for him to begin with. So it's, it's not a shocker; it's just making it official and public. All right. I'm going to play a game early in the show. I know what the rest of the stories are. And here is the bet. Okay? You guys don't know the rest of the story. They don't. And, in fact, my screen's dark, so you can all play along at home. Make it a drinking game. You know how I like to encourage alcoholism, uh, especially early morning drinking. And here is the game. I know the rest of the stories. Do you think that there is a story that has transpired in the last week, Miguel, Andrew, and do you, the fan, that includes the WBC, including some belt or some title for this fight? Ooh, Ooh it's a good game, right? It's a good uh -huh. game. It's a good game. I start uh, with you, Andrew ooh. Labuschagne. Will there be a story today? about how this will be a WBC ranking super fight for the paper mache uh, Aztec Mayan. Uh, uh, you know what it should be? The Baracho belt. Did I get that correct, Miguel? I'm not really good yes, with the just, slang. He would be yes, yes. the Baracho, correct? <laughs> yes, he would, yes. And he behaves well, the that way. A little bit harder, but you're good. Yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes. I, I got it right this time. You know how I am with slang. I always don't do slang mm. right. I, I don't want to be embarrassing. But yes, for the Baracho belt, which it's not what it's called, but maybe I'm lying. Andrew, what say you? How do you bet? As much as I want to say no, sadly, we're talking about the WBC, so it's very possible that, yes, they have come up with some way to get their name on this bill in the building. Uh, so, yeah, and then... Very sad, but I'm leaning towards yes. All right. Until we may or may not get to the story, here's a little bit of help. Each time I'm going to ask you guys at the end of each story as we grow closer and closer to the last story. But if we make it all the way to the pound for pound list, because that's my filler in case we run out of funny Caleb plants in the news. So let's be honest. That's at least an hour by itself. Um, Miguel Antonio Barragan. Let's uh, say you on you the know, bed. I I want to say I haven't heard anything yet, um, and I mean, like, I do tend to keep my ear to the streets, so to speak, per Dr. Mm -hmm. Drake. Uh, so the fact that I haven't actually heard anything yet, I'm going to go help against you my to know judgment. Would that I uh, used the UK Sun Times? Um, shit. Um, yeah. That makes a curveball for you, doesn't it? It 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 does. Some other stuff comes out of left uh, left field sometimes. Um, no, you know what? I, I'm gonna go. Yeah, although it's against my better judgment, I'm gonna say no. Not not right. yet. No. <laughs> well, the next story is not about Oscar De La Hoya and a belt. It's about De La Hoya and Belfort kicking off their press conference. That's right, the golden one, who likes the golden spoons placed in his golden butt. Uh, <laughs> Please see the archives. Uh, met Vitor Belfort, who looked incredibly ripped for B Vitor. And it's pronounced Vitor. Uh, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya, eight-time world champion. Had a press conference last week. These exhibitions that we're seeing, bro, we're seeing are becoming like a circus, right? I want no part of that. This is a real fight, bro. Of course. It's a sanctioned fight and not an exhibition. Everybody knows me. I've never been in a boring fight, right? So what I'm going to do for this fight, I'm going to go out there and fight, okay? An exhibition isn't me. Vitor and I have too much at stake, bro. We do. When I see Belfort, I can see in his eyes how proud of his legacy is and how desperately he needs money. And that's why he's taking the fight. But I respect that. I only added a little bit. 
It's pretty close. I start with they're you. They're all desperate. For, they're all desperate for money. I mean, that's not that's not big. In, I don't you know. think Belfort has even had a million dollar fight. I mean, let's be brutally honest. I start with you, Miguel. Well, you are our crossover he won't on this night. I think he's making probably close to a million for one night of getting his ass kicked. Nah. 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 Lee, if he's never made it, then why would they offer that to him? That that makes no sense on their their side of doing math. Are you trying to say that Oscar De La Hoya? No, is you would not give a fire of his age. <laughs> You could double what his last. I mean, I don't know what Vitor makes. I mean, maybe he made five hundred grand, but you you could add a little bit to what his one of his last paychecks were, and the man would be happy to make that. I mean, come on now, it's uh, this is the fight game here. I got the buzzer from Andrew. Sad. <laughs> Twice, Andrew. It's a little brutal. Damn it. Damn it. All right, Miguel. What say you? Um, I mean, like, I don't, I'm not sure how much he's going to make as far as like Vitor making him a million bucks. I don't think so. Um, he has made like some decent amount of money because he's fought some pretty big fights, you know, and some fights being on pay-per-view, um, back, back in the day when, uh, Affliction MMA got into, you know, the MMA business and they had a couple of cards, Vitor was on there and he got paid handsomely as well. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't think he's going to make the million dollars, but I think it's going to be up there. I'm going to say over 500 K, I think. Um, that, that's what I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards over five. I know you guys have been waiting for this moment. Joining us in the studio from his studio <laughs> is the real bloated one, Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> Whose music is more embarrassing? I, I turn to you, Miguel Antonio Barragon. Whose music is more embarrassing here? Uh, Manic Angels or Oscar I, De La Hoya? You know, I gotta say, Oscar, and when he puts on that fucking sombrero, he just looks embarrassing to shit. It's just oh, like, you want to do the, you want the that the music. mariachi, yeah. The I mariachi. think when he went through his Backstreet Boy phase is way more embarrassing than being mariachi. <laughs> I just they're just completely. throwing hold shit on, at the on. wall, seeing if something wait, sticks. That one. Wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Get... Try different genres. <laughs> wrong. You were wrong on that one, bro. Wrong. I am telling you, Backstreet Boy De La Hoya. Oh, way more embarrassing. Way it sounds like Duran Duran or some shit. You got to see the photo on the cover of his hey, album. Hey, sadly, Man. sadly, wasn't he up for an award, though? <sighs> oh, was he? Oh, Didn't hell like no. Oscar really? actually, nominated yeah, him? Yeah, I think oh. he actually profited off his album where Manny... I don't think Manny. You know did. what? And I think uh, York's been up for a title. But what's the point, Andrew? It, it really doesn't matter. I'm just saying you got to put that in there when you're comparing Bob the two Dylan's singers. Bob considered one of the greatest singers in Oscars, America. And I can't figure o that Oscar's out. Oscar's mariachi, mariachi video might have worked. It just might have worked. I don't know. Might have worked. Andrew, what's a well, you? I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, years ago, just as a fucking joke, I actually bought Manny Pacquiao CD, like when that shit came out. Just as a uh, straight as fucking a joke, joke, right? We as listened a to joke? It. We couldn't, we couldn't he said with an eyebrow raise. Yeah, it, <laughs> yes. a bedtime and fan. we couldn't understand what it was, but it, it was hilarious. We were like, oh, well, let's add this to the, to the fucking money that he makes. <laughs> Joining Andrew, his favorite fighter in the world, singing live at his local bar in Pasadena, where he will get picked up and driven home safely. <laughs> No! Oh, no. He's reading the lyrics on his cell phone. I hope he's reading all these videos off. It's not as bad, bro. It's not as how, bad. How does he not know the lyrics? Everybody knows. Everybody no, knows I think he's Spanish probably probably. streaming himself on his phone. I want to believe he's streaming oh. himself on his phone. And I actually yeah, know the Mexican good. restaurant he's at in Pasadena. Wow. How did I always just miss Oscar in Pasadena? It's very weird. Oh, well. Let's move forward. Boxing buzz. And here it is. Well, wait a minute. Wait, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, go ahead. So the Triller thing is a pay-per-view fight, correct? Yeah. Yes. Do you guys I want to spend my their, money on this. Do you guys think most of their sales is going to be the, the – uh, their money is going to be on the sales of that fight and pay-per-view. I don't think those guys are getting guaranteed money. I think it is going to be how good the fight does. Cause right now it looks like Triller is in real bad place 
financially, mm-hmm. right? With the Telefimo Lopez fight that they still haven't completed. There's six million in in the hole on that yeah. one. Now I guess they can forfeit and only pay a certain percentage. Um, but but I don't know if they have the guaranteed money for a fight that won't generate what they, they're, they're already in one of those situations, I guess is a better way of saying it. They're already in the hole. So why would they tell Oscar and Vitor? Oh yeah, we'll give you guys 25 million and they don't have 25 million to get them. Cause you, you'd got to think Oscar's on the high side of, of that, that, uh, that money, he's going to be demanding a little yeah. bit more Triller made 80 million with Tyson. They're probably thinking they're going to hit the same lotto which I don't, I don't believe. I don't think Vitor Belfort is that big of a star. He might have been at one point in his career, but he's not today. And Oscar has used this card up, man. Oscar's fans are not going to come back um, for this bullshit. Uh, Oscar's already put them through so much of this, this money grab type of situations. I, I don't see them buying into this one. Hmm. Okay. I like where you're going with this, Andrew. I like what you, I like what the Rock is cooking on this particular topic. It was fun. It was good. It was a good contribution. Uh, the I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. This fight's not going to happen September 11th. LA is still on lockdown, or it's going back to lockdown. They're certainly on a mask mandate. It's kind of a shit show there. I mean, I'm just being perfectly honest. Uh, that's going to be a problem. Uh, they Did you guys hear? Do did hear, did you like, hear about the lawyers? Exactly. Lopez's lawyers are filing a lawsuit against Triller. Oh, geez. No. You mean Bob? Bre- breach of contract. Isn't Bob yeah, his lawyer? Of course. We knew. Of him. I mean, yeah. At the end when, of the day, once they started to try to lure, you know, tell FEMA to fucking the uh, to Australia, at that point, it's just going to go south real fast. Yep. Yep, they they uh, Telefimo Lopez. They're trying to say why can't they be on the co-main event to De La Hoya's, and that's that's because that then they're talking. You know, you'll be millions and millions in yeah. debt. You add a six million dollar debt to to De La Hoya fight card. <laughs> so, You're already in the red. So geez. they're like, no, yeah, they're like, no, Lopez, we can't do that either. And Lopez is, you know, he he can't believe it, but no, there's reasons. There's there's no money there. Fucking blew that one. Yeah. Wow. Strong. Strong. Are we ready? Mm-hmm. Next story. Boxing buzz. And this is the story you've all been waiting for. The September 18th fight between Canelo Alvarez and Caleb Plant for the undisputed super middleweight championship of the world, which was supposed to be a practically done deal. Yeah, right. Has apparently fallen apart. No shocker. Plant told ESPN that he agreed to everything but Team Canelo's ridiculous request became too much notice they didn't put what the ridiculous requests were like i know i don't know yes wouldn't I have loved man we would have loved to see what exactly these requests were yeah right i want green m&ms like what is a ridiculous <laughs> yes. request as a fighter that i get paid more because i'm the a side yes. uh that you make less because you're a shitty b side fighter uh wait we can keep going down this list uh, that you actually have to get drug tested because the only possible way Canelo can win this is if he's hopped up on every known PED, uh, that it's held at a neutral venue because guaranteed the PBC would love to steal this fight and the belts and put him on Caleb for a rematch that would be through the roof. Um, how am I doing so far? Can I keep going on these? Uh, a neutral selection of judges, a smaller fucking ring so that Caleb Plant can't run. Uh, Let's see, what else? And, oh, I don't know, equal shares of, you know, the streaming and video rights because, after all, Canelo's the fucking star in this fight and Caleb isn't. How'd I do? How'd I do with the unusual and unrealistic requests? I start with you, Andrew. What do you believe are the ridiculous requests? Um... I don't, you know, I don't know what they, what they were. If it, listen, he's supposed to really take whatever Canelo and their team is offering. Um, Except ridiculous the, requests, Andrew, get re, it correct. The rematch, the rematch thing might've played in big because then Al Heyman just loses his title in one fight. Right. There's no rematch. There's no, so, and they said the PBC was carrying this thing. So they're the, going to be the ones that were on the hook for the majority of the 40 million that Canelo was supposed to make. Uh, 
could just be a possibility Al Heyman pulled out because he didn't get his rematch. Then then it made the $40 million, I guess, make sense. You, you can hope that Caleb can at least look good to make the, the rematch interesting. They make more money on the rematch. But, uh, no, they he decided to keep the title. There's, Canelo's hands are tied behind his back. Crawford's hands are tied behind their back. There's none. They, they've offered these men millions of dollars. Constantly, these men refuse fights. They say no, yet somehow the PBC is still in business. These these fans still tune into their fights. You, I don't get it. I don't understand how, how people can be so blind to some of the bullshit that's put out there by this PBC company. Um, uh, Canelo is the reason why Caleb Plant was going to make the most money of his life. I know if you ask Caleb, he would have took whatever Canelo was offering. I know if they ask him off fucking record when Al Heyman's yeah, done being like his key. fucking daddy. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know they're gonna he's gonna say I would have took whatever they offered. It was my manager that told me not to do it. And and because he signed that contract, that man owns him. You know, I know they like talking about Bob, Bob, Bob owns everyone. Well, Al Heyman owns his fighters, too. That's why he tells these men, call him Mr. Heyman after fights. They they know who their daddy is, okay? Mm-hmm. Caleb Plant fucking had to say no because Al Heyman wanted to keep that title. Uh, it just looks better for TV. They can put Caleb in a few more easy PBC matchups, and hopefully they can, a year down the line or so, they'll go back to the negotiating table, and Caleb will will have made a bigger name for himself, and maybe they get a better deal. But that's a big risk. You're, pl- you're playing when you had, what was it? What, what did they offer Caleb in this fight? $10 million? 10, yeah. What he asked, 10, as last I remember, that's what he was asking. $10 million, man. This kid is going to really, really put that's the biggest gamble so far that I've seen uh, out of the PBC. You're going to put yeah. 10 million on the line. You have that guaranteed and you're going to put that, that on the line. Not for putting the year? Belt on the line. Yeah. Is that worth losing the belt? Like, dude, it's a fucking belt. Lose the belt. Take the 10 mil. God damn. And, 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 and fight. Whatever yeah. happened to fighting and winning, whatever happened to believing in yourself. Some of these guys at the PBC, they they just they allow Heyman to make them look like they really don't believe in themselves. No, I need the most money ever because you know, hey, you, hey, what? You're gonna lose? You're yeah. you're already doubting yourself in this fight? Yeah, that's the real ticket. Think that's Hagler and them walked away now. going, hey, you know, I don't know, I need the most money ever because you know. Sad. It's sad, but this is what Al Heyman, what they're allowing Al Heyman to make them look like. I don't like calling them what I what I say on on the the podcast this podcast, but I do because Al Heyman puts that there. He puts that in front of me, that illusion that these guys they're just they're they don't have a willingness to win. They're in it for the fucking diamond rings, the fucking houses, the horses, you know, the hot girl on the private boat. That's all they want. As long as Al Heyman can guarantee them that. They're good with, with doing everything that he says. That's the illusion that Al Heyman puts in front of me on, on all PBC stable. Spence, you look like a fucking coward not fighting the man of the welterweight division in Terrence Crawford. The man who beat the man is Terrence fucking Crawford. You look like a coward not fighting him. Caleb Plant looks like a coward not fighting Saul Alvarez. Don't give me this bullshit about an A and a B side. There's only an A side in boxing. There is no fucking B. When you're the champ, you're the champ. When Roy was at the table, when De La Hoya was at the table, Chavez, Pacquiao, Tyson, don't give a fuck who was at the table. If they're a superstar, it's them and then you. No A and B. Cowards. <laughs> Hold on, I'm I'm getting my sedatives out. <laughs> Is that what that noise was? <laughs> okay, let me take a few of those. Uh, instead, I'll go for this. <laughs> <laughs> you said pull out. <laughs> okay, cool. That's as far as I can go without going into a Caleb Plant white trash 20 minute dissertation. I'll give you the Beavis and Butthead joke. Uh, Miguel, can you top that? No, I'm not even going to try to top that. I don't. But. I don't blame you. I don't. <laughs> but, blame, I don't blame you. I, I certainly don't. I certainly don't disagree with Andrew. Uh, it's obvious that he's trying to hold the belt hostage. I'm talking about Plant here. Um, Is he trying I, to I pull would, out? <laughs> he's trying. He's trying to avoid having to pull out, so he doesn't want to like go in to begin with. I guess if that makes sense. Um, 
but <laughs> it's just it's really bad. <laughs> it's, it's it looks it looks really bad, not just on him, but on PBC overall. Knowing that they basically were running the shit and and they still can get it done, you know, it's at this point, it's like, what the hell are they good for? They, we know we know they're gonna tr- they're gonna end up getting uh, Caleb a couple of other title defenses just for the sake of adding more title defenses to his belt. It sounds like just reading some of uh, Caleb Plant's quotes. It's this dude legitimately believes that the unification and being an undisputed champion is so much more important to De La Hoya than the fucking belt, than, than you know, the, the $10 million it is to, to fucking uh, to Caleb. It, like, I don't know what the fuck he's holding out on. Last time, if I'm not, rem- if I re- recall correctly, it was like n- there wasn't enough time to train. Now he has enough time to train, but now it's something else. It's like, dude, there's always going to be something. It's this fucking laundry list. It's like, chicks dating dudes it's a laundry list of things they want in a fucking guy it's like no no i want all this and this and, this and that and then you can get your t- your title shot at my ibf belt like that's so much more important it's really pathetic so it's, did you just it, like in boxing to chasing vagina <laughs> yes <laughs> all of a sudden all of a sudden they're 40 with no children huh is that yeah, what you're exactly. saying <laughs> and, and they hit the wall and they, they, you know they hit the wall and they're like oh shit what did i do i missed my opportunities when i had the opportunities and now i'm lonely drinking boxed wine with a bunch of cats <laughs> Sorry, I I really have a lot to say on this topic. Moving forward, Oscar De La Hoya. I'm doing this for the right reason. Ooh, we are getting one step closer, possibly to a story. So let's check in. Miguel, have you changed your opinion? Is Oscar <laughs> fighting for a belt or not fighting for a belt? Um, WBC style. You know what? Shit. No, I'm going to stick with no still. I'm going to stick with no still. Still with the no. Andrew, have you changed your opinion on Oscar fighting for a WBC uh, Baracho belt? That's a really good joke. I, I almost feel like we need to explain it, but it's. I, I'm glad I just got the word right. I pulled that one out of my I, ass. I want to say. I want to say he's had a belt for all of these exhibition matches, right? The Floyd Paul one. Yeah, I gotta say yes. I'm gonna say yes. Suleiman's been weird, man. The dude's the dude's on a weird run right now. So yeah, I'm still leaning sadly towards yes. Am I still correct in my translation of that? Basically, a drunken fuck, Miguel. Uh, yes, yes. It's uh, it's B O. So just as borracho. Make sure it's a borracho. borracho. I'm not go. rolling my R's hard enough, but it's yes, right. it's basically a drunk fuck. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay, cool. Oscar De La Hoya. I'm doing this for the right reason. Money, <laughs> of course. Why not? I don't have Cindy queued up here, but um, this is a money changes everything story. He's back. The golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya of East Los Angeles returns to the ring. Miguel Maravilla. God bless him for writing this up like it's a real fight. Let's look at this. He's got to be new. I swear to God, he's writing this up with air quotes and he went all the trouble of spelling and using commas correctly. I'm actually kind of impressed that he's trying this hard. Uh, the pheno- the phenom, Vitor the phenom Belfort, who's one and zero and one in boxing, of Rio de Janeiro takes on De La Hoya uh, at Staples Center on September 11th. Let's read more. I'm doing this for the right reasons. Yes, I'm not doing the voice because the quotes are just so goddamn insane. <laughs> I'm doing this for the right reasons. I can't wait to fight Belfort and get back in that ring. De La Hoya told Fight News. Uh, it will be a fun fight, and it will be an intense fight. Uh, intense. This will be a fight. Uh, I'm going to be intense for a lot of people. Wow. Today's word is intense. <laughs> if you're playing a drinking game at home, let's see how many more times the word intense shows up in the article, shall we? It's going to be an intense fight for a lot of people. It will be emotional. What people went through. Wow. 20 years. We remember. We always remember. Wow. Are we having Cesar Chavez fucking wet dreams here or something, boy? Uh, the eight-time world champion in six weight divisions and the 1992 Olympic gold medalist and the foe of Andrew Labache. Uh, let's not do a song and dance or these exhibitions that we're tired of. These exhibitions, wow, how many times is he going to say exhibition? Oh, I thought it was a tense. Are becoming Jeez. a circus. I want no part of that. An exhibition, that's the third time, isn't us. Vitor and I have too much at stake. Vitor has nothing at stake, dick. Uh, <laughs> while I respect you, brother, Belfort, he said, I can tell you one thing. We are going to kick the shit out of each other. 
that's one thing for sure, De La Hoya told Belfort. I have zero animosity towards Belfort, De La Hoya told Fight News. Returning to the fights venue that saw the first boxing fight when he fought in an all-LA showdown against Shane Mosley with a statue of the Golden Boy outside of Staples, this is Oscar's homecoming. No, it would be Pasadena. <laughs> would be the bar in Pasadena that he frequents. This puts everything in perspective for me. It reminds me of all the love I have for LA. The love I have for everyone that has supported me all of these years. Bottom line, we will get in the ring and I can't wait. It's intense! God bless you, Oscar. Smart. The fact of the matter, I am 48 years old. I'm just doing anything possible to stay injury-free. The preparation has been all smart training. I will be ready. Is there any more great quotes? Yes. <laughs> I wanted a different challenge, and that's why I picked Vidor. He is a legend, tough guy, a striker, and not a boxer. The fact that he is a big guy, this represents a challenge. Yeah, sure it does. I've been in the top... I, I've been in top challenges all my life. I've basically been fighting since I was five. Uh, I've had every challenge in the book, including saying coherent things on live pay-per-view while drunk. Uh, <laughs> and high, I, have same time. I have always fought the best. No, you haven't. That's a lie. I'm at peace now. No, you're not. I finally got there, and it's been a struggle. I get to the top of all of fighting, and that is what I love doing. I feel great. This is for the right reasons, because I love it. Wow, I got love it in twice. It's hard to explain. I never gave up, and I will never give up. That's a lie, too. You fucking quit in the Bernard Hopkins fight. What the fuck goes on in his head? I start with you, Andrew Labashe. What the fuck goes on in his head? Does he believe the bullshit he spews? Oh, did we lose him? Did we lose Andrew? Did the dog eat? Did the dog eat? The, uh, I'll start with you, Miguel. Yeah. Does Oscar uh, believe uh, that it's scattered brain at this point, dude? That fucking smashing that he received at the at the hands of a uh, a fucking Manny Pacquiao. I mean, I left him. I think forever traumatized. In addition to everything else he's got going on, of course, and lastly, of course, uh, losing his cash cow in Canelo. So at this point, I think his brain is just a fucking dumpster fire of ideas, sp randomly sparking off, thinking like, "Oh, this is a great idea," and then he opens his mouth and out it comes. So it's just at this point, it's like CTE. I'm sure. I'm uh, gonna turn this to you, Andrew. Now, I need you to do a really good take here so I have enough time to walk and get coffee and come back. And I'm going to give you the topic one more time. I need you to vamp for at least two or three minutes because I have to go all the way to the kitchen to get a full cup of coffee. All right, Andrew? Here is the question. Yeah, I'll Feel try. free to go completely off. Does Oscar De La Hoya believe the shit he spews? Unfortunately, I think when this fight was planned... I think Oscar was probably intoxicated with alcohol and Triller was intoxicated with success of the Tyson Roy Jones fight. Um, what makes me nervous about this one is did Triller believe the numbers that Oscar was spewing at the bar? Um, talking live gates, talking pay-per-view sales. You know, I, I, I'm going to say it again, uh, Miguel. I do not believe the fans are going to buy into this De La Hoya fight. He has left a bad taste in their mouth numerous times. We're talking the Hopkins showdown. We're talking the Pacquiao showdown. A lot of his fans thought he took a dive in both situations. We know for a fact that the Manny Pacquiao was a fixed fight. Um, Freddie yeah. Roach came out, talked about an IV being in the arm. They mm. talked about Oscar was throwing up all night because his stomach had shrunk down to a size where it just wasn't holding food. He he starved himself to, yeah, to make 147. What was it, 147, 147. I believe, yep. that night? Uh -huh. and yeah, and, and then he couldn't uh, regenerate after, overnight, you know, gain the 17 yeah, pounds or whatever these fighters yeah. come in rehydrate there you go thank you uh the, the next day so we know that was a fixed fight um, <laughs> it, it was uh then in the, the then in the roy the bernard hopkins showdown you know the body shot where oscar took it he goes down to the canvas and he's slapping the canvas this yeah. most bro, guys that get a bro, body that hurt a lot bro <laughs> it hurt. I all, all i'm 
I couldn't believe it. Like, hey, I, all I'm saying is most guys that we've seen take a body shot that they can't, they don't move, right? It paralyzes right. them for, for you know, you 10, 12 seconds. These guys are coming in. around like a fish is incorrect behavior. <laughs> yeah, he's like, damn it. Like, I want to get it. up. Oh, I can't hurts. believe you caught me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you caught me. Bernard so, is so much better as a fighter. Oh, by the way, sign the contract, Bernard. <laughs> Uh, by the way, they were like they were playing golf the day before. Was it was it Bernard? Was it him in Delahoya playing golf the day before, or was it Floyd in Delahoya? One of the matchups, of Oscar was even seen. They were seen playing go around a golf before the day before the fight. So Oscar has left a bad taste in his in his fans' um, uh, mouth for for a few fights. Vitor Belfort is not big enough to get no. them off of their, their ass to pay for this fight. I think Oscar would have had a better chance at signing uh, the likes of a Chuck Liddell, who's more loved. I know that the UFC and all that plays an effect. I'm just giving you a, a more loved as an MMA fighter legend, uh, a Chuck Liddell, or or make it an all Los Angeles thing and try to bring out the, the Sugar Shane Mosley rivalry again. They, they had... The steroids angle, right? Yeah, I always yeah. thought Delahoy De could play that steroids card on Shane Mosley to get the third fight. Those two are loved in L.A. Maybe they sell out a, a Dodger stadium. But but Vitor Belfort, I, I don't, I do not see him and, and Oscar making money. And and so if if Triller's head over heels on this, with you know, off, they said, oh yeah, well, Oscar will give you fifteen million. Or I what did Mike Tyson make? Tyson made a eight million in that fight. Oh damn! Uh, against uh, Roy, against Roy, yeah. What oh, if, shit. I don't if, know. if they, even if they offered him the same as that, I, I don't know if if Oscar um, brings that in right now on pay per view or in the live gate. I definitely do not see his live gate. I do not see his fans spending the thousands of dollars they once did on on his fights. That that's not going to happen in this one. No, I think Oscar is banking on the boxing versus MMA thing again. Like, that's essentially what it is because it isn't necessarily uh, Belfort's popularity at this point. It's just the fact that he's another, you know, a former uh, or I guess retired uh, mixed martial artist. Because, I mean, Vitor has a little bit of hate from the MMA community because that fucker's tested positive for PEDs a couple of times. There was a point where, a like, uh, yeah, well, therapeutic. I mean, that he tested positive for. That's what I'm saying. So uh, how he, he like would have made more money at the press conference for God's sakes. If, and, if yeah. that is the case. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say he there was a point where like uh, testosterone replacement therapy, there was like some sort of uh, like TRT. therapeutic a exemption. Yeah, right. yeah, some exemption for a while. And he was whipping people's asses and the motherfucker looked yoked to the gills. So he has a bit of hate. You know what I'm saying? So people aren't exactly going to tune in to see like, oh, p potentially a mixed martial artist to do well. No, they're probably going to tune in to see, you know, Vitor get his ass beat. But anyway, nonetheless, my point is to what you were saying. Vitor isn't necessarily the most popular retired mixed martial artist right now. I'm sure De La Hoya could have gone after someone else for the sake of the cash grab but you know he's doing that with Vitor and I think he's banking on the uh, boxing versus MMA again and not necessarily the fact that Vitor is popular because he isn't alright even, even Anderson Silva even Anderson Silva yeah. would have oh, yeah. been a, a he better he wasn't going to fight Anderson better... he beat Chavez Jr. for God's sakes Oscar wants no part this... of a real fight but wait a minute. This is where your um, Cindy Lauper song comes in, though, because all money right. changes all. Stall, and stall, and stall, 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 stall. and and listen, Oscar, <laughs> if we're talking, you know, we're all talking about business side of it. He probably would have had a better chance of getting one of these MMA guys to agree to a cage fight and then agree not to take him down. Right. <laughs> For an extra yeah. few hundred thousand bucks, you're going to shoot, but it's not going to work every fucking time. You hear me? <laughs> it's yeah. it's going to be make, one make of those nights. Good. Make it look good. Yeah. Though. I'm just going to be the 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 fucking wizard uh, at getting out of your shot on this very, uh, one night. And you never know. MMA guy. Gonna, Fuck it. You're going to give me a million bucks. I'll do that. Yeah. Boom. Now oh, we yeah. have a cage match. Now you have the interest of the fans wanting to tune in to De La Hoya versus Belfort in a fucking ring. Come on, they're not tuning in. Oh, I'm on the wrong verse. God damn it. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Oh Futilely, I tried to get it queued up correctly. Uh, uh, hold on. I'm trying really quickly. Uh, wow, this is a really sad song about shit going sideways. Thank you, Cindy. 
All right, we have eight <laughs> stories left. Do you hey, Lee, if I ever best? sign, if I ever, Lee, Lee. Yeah. If I ever sign fights, I'm going to have that plane. Just that, we're just going to take that and just keep Do you think it plays on a loop here. in Al Heyman's office? <laughs> like you walk into Al Heyman's office and all you do Assuming Al Heyman is real. Assuming, <laughs> assuming that he's real. Eight stories left. Miguel, have you changed your bet? Um, wait, which one are we talking about? Oh, the, the, the WBC belt. De La Hoya. Uh, De La Hoya. Um, uh, damn it. You know what? I'm getting closer. Not yet, but I'm getting closer. Ooh, all right. Uh, Andrew, have you changed your bet? Eight stories left. No, sir. No, right. it's actually getting stronger My my <laughs> as we get later into the show. <laughs> that was well timed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys have waited a whole week. I'm just going to step back and let the air breathe a little bit on this next story because Andrew's waited a whole week for the next topic and it is all about the next heavyweight sensation. USA super heavyweight Richard Torres Jr. won by unanimous decision over Allegrian <laughs> Chalupa Bolanente or whatever and, and Rogaku Kukagan Shamalama Ding Dong throwback in Tokyo Olympics. Torres dropped both Budapest in round one. And if you're wondering, yes, I butchered every name involved here. Keep it down. He will move on to Saturday's quarterfinal against the Cuban. That would be this Saturday, which would have been yesterday. Uh, I don't actually have the update. Sorry. I, I don't won. watch the Olympics. You, I he think won. He, won. he won again. Yes, sir. All right, Andrew. Yes, sir. Oh, no, y'all right, Andrew, me. This is your <laughs> favorite topic ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Years. Here we go. The Punxsutawney Phil no. <laughs> of Olympic boxing. Let it fly, Andrew. Tell me all about the Olympic boxing. No, game. no. Oh, shit. Uh yeah, yeah, no, I haven't watched too much of it, Lee. It's been pretty sad uh, how they're showing these these boxing matches. Uh, listen, I don't know who their PR people are, but they should all be fired because they have not done justice for the U.S. boxing team. Richard Torres is the only one that I've seen come over my feed, yet there's like three or four young men and women uh, going for medals still, or at least fighting to get into a medal round. Um, yet we're not being shown it. And I'm, you know, it's just sad. That's where we are in amateur boxing right now, because I'm linked up to a lot of social media. I don't know how your guys' feeds are, but I'm just not seeing it. Um, we need to plug Mario Serrano right now. I mean, seriously, they, if, if that's where the amateur boxing is, they need to reach out to a, a guy like Mario Serrano, who's done big things for a lot of not only local fighters, but a lot of professional fighters. Like he would at least had schedules out, results out, stories on fighters. Like it's just it's sad. That's where we're at. But yeah, Richard Torres won last night at I believe he fought at 3 a.m. in the morning here. Um, he won uh, and uh, he's moving on to to the medal round uh, to for gold. I believe that, that that's what he placed with this morning. He's going for gold. Andrew, did you just put Mario Serrano over like 16 times on the show? He's probably having a wet dream right now. I don't think we've said his name in quite some time. And shout out to Mario. He is a friend of the show. He does listen to the show, and he is a friend and of he ours. Gets the job, but he would have got the job done, correct? The man's yeah, he linked. He, I, he, got he us, has he got everybody. Me to go see Caleb Plant. I mean, what do you want me to say oh, yeah. on the topic? That, that's actually where I met Lee. <laughs> yeah. This there show would not so, be the way it is if it were not for Mario Serrano at this moment. Everybody send a dollar to Mario Serrano. It would make him very happy at this moment. And uh, a big fail, big fail on the PR department of the USA Amateur Boxing. Uh, whoever runs that, just a total disaster for these for these fighters in this go around. Now I heard, you know, you've seen that we didn't do so good, right? A lot of our fighters were beaten out there, but. But uh, does that matter? No, I, you know, I didn't these guys see it, gonna... Andrew. That's why I asked you. I, I huh. look, my my uh, my friend, coworker, uh, confidant. Uh, you guys all know him as Killian. Watches the fucking Olympics every night like a mental case, <laughs> and he loves it. He loves the Olympics, and every time I walk through the room while he's watching it, he's like, "This is real sports." And he was watching archery. I said, you know, uh, no, what was he watching? He was watching archery. And I go, no, that's a game. 
That's not a sport. Archery is a game, okay? Archery is a game. Boxing is a sport. Then he was watching water polo, and I went, that's just organized chaos. I... Okay, I've I've said my piece about the Olympics. I've never watched Olympic boxing. I'm always disappointed with Olympic boxing. I'm with the dude who who was the one that flipped everybody off. That was uh Oh Michael Conlon. Yeah, yeah, Conlon. Yeah. By the way, how's that career working out, Conlon? Oh yeah, well. the side last note, side note, how's that career working out, Conlon? Are you waiting the for the last state fight? The last the last amateur fighter that caught America's attention is De La Hoya. Um, unfortunately it was a lot to do with his mother's story of a, an Olympian from East LA that just lost his mom to cancer, but they aired He's his not fights from East because LA. Of, He's from Montebello. It doesn't it matter. Right. Off. At that time. I know, but at that time, that's what they were, were pushing and it worked since then. Um, Stevenson, Andre Ward. Uh, who else is, has meddled in, you know, and they just have not gotten the same exposure. Andre Ward, one of the biggest, one of the biggest drops fumbles boxing ever did. The Bay, this young man went undefeated for his, basically his whole uh, uh, teen to adult life. He went undefeated. No, there's I no, total, there's totally nothing of him he in played, Oakland, he California. Was there's no the only fighter to come out of there too. I mean, let's be brutally honest. It, out of it, East LA as a place, not Brooklyn or something else well known. He's the guy who came out of there, right? In fact, I he was comes out of Oakland undefeated and with yep. the gold medal, you guys, with the gold medal. It's not like this is some backyard store. Oh, he fought in this one, you know, circuit where he never, no, this guy goes to the Olympics and goes undefeated there. Nothing. There's nothing. Nothing. It's it's, it's insane. Shout out to Andre Ward. Um, but, you know, I hear you. In fact, I will say this. I'm going to take credit. Nobody listens to my day job, but recently I've gone back to speaking full time, right? You guys know that part, but, um, I've now been saying it. I grew up in East L.A. And I was inspired by Oscar De La Hoya to say that. I say it every day. And in my <laughs> mind, I smile completely. They go, oh, really? Where'd you grow up? Montebello. It's kind of like East L.A., but not you, since there's a real place called yes. East L.A. In fact, when you drive through East L.A., I just recently drove through there to an event uh, with Killian. He goes, the signs actually say East L.A. Is it L.A. or East L.A.? I said it's L.A., but the signs say East L.A. It's awesome. Only East L.A. would give itself brand identity over L.A. by calling it East L.A. And by the way, West L.A. does the same shit where all the snooty white people go. Is that bashing white people? I'm, I'm really watching my P's and my Q's. Uh, here's my question about this. All right, because I got a game for both of you. You guys like games. Uh, who do you think Richard Torres signs with after he gets through the Olympics? I start with you, Miguel. I've got both up, and I think I know the answer. But uh, he, who do you think he's going to sign with? He's a heavyweight boxer, right? Yeah. Uh, top rank. Top rank immediately. Yeah. They're going to want to try to get an American uh, heavyweight. Uh, another <laughs> one, I should say, added to the roster. Oh, what the fuck? Wait, one more. What? 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 Uh, all right. I go to you, Andrew. While I queue up. Yeah, I gotta again. agree. I gotta <laughs> agree a hundred percent with Miguel. Yeah, Bob he's does. Going to Bob top rank. does like him some. Okay, let's be honest. It's a it's an informed answer. Bob does like him some Olympians, right? And we don't want to get Bob started yet. We do have plenty of Bob stories left for the day. Where big Bob? Yes, all of you, take a breath. Top rank Bob will be here today. Okay, it's really hey, hard. Hey, hey Lee, place. I spoke all week. When, yes. when you when you look at the scoreboard for American heavyweight uh, where it's at, it's it's going through top rank. Uh, Tyson Fury has made a hundred million with East ESPN. He's making millions of dollars fighting on ESPN pay per view. On top of that, um, I think if if they're they've been watching the who their their prospect or their young man might face in the future. It all signs point to to top rank. So now nah, he doesn't get out of uh, Tokyo with, uh, without a, a Bob Arum signing. Uh, no. <laughs> and... I, I got to hear this. I got to hear this. <laughs> all right. You guys are missing the easy one. I was originally going to tell you the real, real correct answer, but I'm just going to go with my crazy answer because it's so much more fun. 
Oscar De La Hoya plays the Chicano card, and he signs as the first heavyweight ever with an Olympic gold medal for Golden Boy. Mm-hmm. That falls dead in the room. Sign, signing Torres bonuses from? might go ahead. Go ahead. What's Torres' ethnicity? I see Torres' last name. Where's he? Where's it? What's his? Uh, what do you think from? he could be? I mean, it's got to be Latino. I mean, well, I know, unless like, he's straight up uh, white and there's like some kind of weird Dominican genetic joke something? going on here. Like Dominican or something. Or like... all right, let's see where he grew up. You think is that going to change your answer? No, no, it still won't. I mean, the fact that he represented USA, regardless. I mean, they, you know, top rank has big baby or whatever. Oh my other, God, he looks baby. very, he looks very Mexican. He looks oh. way Mexican. He's kind of got that white Mexican thing going as well. All right, let's see where he's. Uh, I'm wrong. He's spelled with he's an Cuban. S. Oh, isn't that... oh, no, 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 oh, no, wait, no. He's Mexican American. He's Mexican American. Hold on, Andrew. Lee was. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna even go PBC, but if uh, even if we did PBC, mm-hmm. wrong. No, Bob's got him under contract before he gets on a plane. The Cuban thing sold it for me. That was the end of it right there. I'm like, all you, the only other thing you could have said was Puerto Rican that would have made Bob's dick hard. I resent that. I can't get my dick hard. Moving forward, KO'd by COVID, Ben versus Granado doesn't happen. After all the shit talking by Adrian Granado this week, sadly, it was reported that Connor Ben tested positive for the AIDS and had to pull out of Saturday's <laughs> fight camp for the main event against Adrian Granado. Uh, to, answer, means- yeah. to answer the question, Lee, to Larry California is where the young Richard Torres Jr. is from. Uh, You know what? If he was Mexican from Tulare, he's so fresh meat for Oscar De La Hoya. But Bob's already got it. And Bob's got a toehold up there, Andrew. I already know that fact as well. He likes Book and Fresno. This is, I'll I'll say it again. Wait, because it doesn't happen often on the show. How did Lee do with his prediction? Not even close. I wasn't even close on this one. The joke couldn't be set up. Nothing got right. I just made a gut choice. And I was utterly not even in the ballpark. Mm. Got it? Mark this on your calendar. I'll be predicting fight outcomes here shortly. And, you know, that's more important. Connor Ben tested positive for the AIDS, Andrew. And Adrian Granados was able to talk shit all week, especially after the fight was canceled. In fact, his shit talking ramped up to a degree <laughs> that it was almost fantastic about how he was going to beat the shit and silence Connor Ben, which is hysterical to me. Like, I didn't put any of the stories in, but I shit you not, Adrian Granados has now gone on a goddamn tirade of how he was going to silence and tame Connor Ben right after Connor Ben tested positive for the AIDS. Uh, anybody sad about this? I start with you, Andrew Labache. No, you know, uh, actually uh, happy that, that Granados was able to, to avoid that fight. Hopefully it's not rescheduled because um, it was a mismatch in the very beginning. Uh, ben is not just so much bigger Adrian than Granados. Granados. Get it when... right, Andrew. You know what? You're wrong. Yeah, he, looked, according... yeah, he looked like a... Wrong. Adrian Granados would have killed him. Killed him. Yeah. He definitely would have thrown his punches. I'm not saying that the young man don't come to fight. He said He's it right just on always the telecast overmatched, on Saturday, overpowered. Andrew. He had it. He had the fight. He had it completely. I hear you. Completely yeah. worked out. Every time he puts his head down and closes his eyes, he won. I get it. And it <laughs> many, many fighters have had those feelings when they went to sleep the night I before the it. fight. Uh, yeah. Miguel and Tony Paragon, what have you got? <laughs> On this completely ridiculous story of Adrian Granados winning the match in his head. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely not sad that the fight didn't go down. We talked about it last week. Uh, Granados being an over, you know, undersized, I should say, uh, welterweight. Um, it wasn't going to go good for him or well. Uh, I, I suspect that it was going to get pretty, you know, we, we figured he was going to get fucked up during the fight. So, it, we, understandably, you know, the, this shit goes down because of COVID and the fight gets scrapped. The co-main event gets moved up to main event. And we got ourselves actually a pretty entertaining fight as main event if you guys saw it. But uh, I am in no way, shape, or form disappointed that the, the uh, Connor Ben and Granados fight didn't go down because, I mean, 
mean, let's be real here. He just, you know, spared uh, Granados the ass whooping. So that is um, not no, true. Assume... That <laughs> what are you doing? He is the second coming of that division. That belt is his. His words, exactly. I'm I'm sure. I believe it. And, uh, I mean, I'm sure at some point. He's starting to sound like fucking, uh, what's his name, Uh, Chavez Jr. when talking about Triple G. He's like, yo, I think it'd be a good fight. Yeah, 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 right. I'm sure. So is Canelo in Oscar's mind, Uh, which (laughs) I so hope they make that fight. Yeah. that might be the first fight I actually go to as media where you actually see me cheer for Canelo from the press oh, box. Oh, hey, don't beat him again. Don't get it. Fucking, <laughs> don't get it fucking twisted, Lee. If oh, De La Hoya wins, oh, if De La Hoya wins and Canelo <laughs> keeps losing at the negotiating, shit. Don't be surprised. What else would they have left? Uh, what what out right now? What do they have left? A, a triple G match? For the uh. Undisputed light heavyweight championship of the world. <laughs> Just say it out loud. It sounds so great. Uh, they right would now, have to, they would have to they would have to do it over over the pond. I don't see it making forty million uh, over here in America. Him and Bevel, uh, that's that. No, I think they do that fight in the UK on DAZN. They let DAZN run that whole thing. The zone would go on, get on the hook for all the money, and they would try shit out of that fight in the UK. But that fight doesn't make shit in Las Vegas. I don't even think the Mexicans fan base knows who the fuck Bevel is. No, I don't think so. Not once. I, I even like my dad remembers the last name. He's like, "Who the fuck is it?" I'm like, "Dad, right, let's let's watch him real quick because we've seen him fight on uh, on Top Rank and uh, you know ESPN Plus a couple of times. So I have to remember who he is. I mean, I have to remind him who he is. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah." Joining me in the studio for our next story. By the way, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six stories or so. Uh, Miguel, do you change your your? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's getting interesting, right? We're it, getting down to the getting, final six. Yes, I'm getting a little antsy. I'm starting to feel it. The pressure now. I'm at the edge of my seat. I, I'm gonna still say no. Andrew. I'm going with the yes still, Lee. Yes, All sir. right, I like that. I like Julie hanging strong. Let me down. Yeah. Joining us in the studio for our next big story is Top Rank Bob. Yes, what? I know you guys are all excited. I'm not. That's why I had to go get coffee because Top Rank Bob takes coffee. Good morning. How are you both doing today? Doing well, Bob. Thank you. How about yourself? Apple la pache. <laughs> yes, sir. Doing very good, Bob. I'm here to read the next story. Everybody excited? Where the very hell is my New York accent? You know, it takes them a few minutes to get into the voice. All right. I'm proud to announce this. It happened during the week. Did you hear the big news, Manuel? I, I did not, Bob. No, please elaborate. What about you, Apple? <laughs> no, sir. I did not hear the big news. All right. I had a press release, but I didn't write it. You know, I don't I do not do shit. Right. I like to smoke pot. But it was a great idea when I had it. And boy, was I fucking high when I did this. Uh, you know that bitch, Cynthia Porschner? Porsche? Whatever the fuck Damn. her name is. Right? <laughs> we, we want to get into fights, Lee. And or you know Bob, that sorry, chick with Bob. the hot tits? Michaela oh, Mayer, Andrew, oh. no, yeah, Apple. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Guess what? I'm yeah. the first one to do this. A threesome. No. <laughs> All right, no. Fucking no, stupidly. That's not it. All right, shut up. I'll make you lose my place because I'll start laughing. I'm making broadcast history on Saturday, August 14th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I will be killing black people again. No, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, Christina yeah, Porcherero yeah, will be reigning, will be joining the reigning WBO junior lightweight champion, Michael Mayer, and they will form the first ever broadcast team that's all female ever on a broadcast on ESPN. Reaction, Manuel. Um, I I don't know. C- congratulations. Um, you know, thumbs up. Good, good going. Kudos. I guess. Did you know that we have Nico Ali Walsh, the grandson of Muhammad Ali, on the card? 
I, I was not aware of that, but uh, I, do, I do know now. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I'll squeeze that kid like I squeezed the old man. <laughs> what about you, Apple? Are you excited for the all-female telecast? Yes, um, it's gonna. That's outstanding. I'm. I'm so glad ESPN is so woke, and and they're able to put this together to allow two women to broadcast fight. And world peace is definitely coming. Thank you, Bob. You were all the bit of Bob today. Wait, let me check with our sensitivity expert, Miguel. Did I do enough today to let Bob go? <laughs> you you did plenty. You did plenty. Uh, thank you. Everybody take a deep breath. And if you're the woman who's theoretically dating me, I'm just saying, you might need to wrap your brain around that last segment. Hey, I've got good news, kid. Bo and Malinaji joined the exhibition circle. What? Promoter Damon Feltz told TMZ he has a pay-per-view card that's in the works featuring former heavyweight champion Riddick Bo and former junior welterweight champion Polly Malinaji. The event would happen on October 2nd at the James L. Knight Arena and Discotheque in Miami. The 53-year-old Bo would take on former NBA star Lamar Odom. You know, the Kardashian. I think I'm right on this one, right? Oh, jeez. Miguel, am I, I right? I, I, I'm pretty sure you are, yes. Cool. Well, the 40-year-old Malinaji will take on Tiki Talk TikToker Corey B in another bout. Ra rapper Aaron Carter as in that Aaron Carter, question mark, is slated to fight Andrew's favorite opponent, Tubba. Where do I even begin with this one? Do we have Riddick I... on the show? Or was the execution of black people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where my family's from, on, more than Lee, enough for today? Lee. Uh, the... I'm keeping terrible. people booked, Andrew. You can look at it both. Nah, that's terrible. That's terrible. Hey, listen, I got something. One... Riddick Bo should not be medically cleared for this fight. Two, I'll always remember Lamar Odom for Odin at the Bunny Ranch. I'm sorry. He is not a Kardashian ex anymore. He's the former NFL player that OD'd at the Bunny Ranch. Uh, wow. And you just gave me <laughs> shit for everything I just did. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think you get to the sound effect for that one all by itself because Andrew did the greasiest <laughs> joke of the day. That's right. It's time for what do you mean? That the is fact. How did that happened. How do you know about the fucking bunny ranch and somebody being at the fucking bunny ranch and the fact that you know about the bunny ranch and the story about the bunny ranch and what the fuck were you on? I'm already doing all the things your wife's going to do. Listen to the show or somebody passes this along. So let's get it over with, Andrew. Um, <laughs> Why don't you answer for yourself knowing about a story about the bunny ranch? I don't know. I'm just telling you. That's what I remember I'm doing. Here's the answer. God damn it, Andrew. A little bird told me while I was at work. Honey. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Came over I don't know. Feet. Shit. What is the bunny ranch, Chris? I don't even know what that is. Oh, right? no. We've had cable. We've had cable our whole life. He used to have a show on HBO. Oh, yes. Yeah. Exactly. I remember yeah. that. All right. Yeah, yeah. M Miguel, did you want to contribute to the shit show card or tell me about somebody else who was spotted at the Bunny Ranch? Um, no, just that I, I know <laughs> uh, Lamar. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna totally skip that one real quick. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, you know, Lamar needs the money, I, I think. You know, uh, what, his, his fucking divorce with one of the Kardashians is pretty bad. So I can see why he's doing this. Why the hell they're going to allow uh, Riddick Bo into a ring again at this point it's is beyond me. But, I mean, apparently these guys are that thirsty for money at this point. They're that, you know, down and out. Uh, so it's, it's pretty fucked up. But, I mean, whatever. Shit, these guys. I, I, I'll be lying Riddick. to you if I said I wouldn't want to watch this train wreck because I probably do want to watch it. Riddick Bo sounds like Tommy Hearns right now when he talks. Yeah. And I Taylor. bet you, I almost can guarantee you, if they shot video of Riddick Bo sparring on the mitts or on a speed bag, he would look like Muhammad Ali going into the Larry Holmes fight. This fight should not be legal. They should stop this. The doctor should stop this from going. Riddick Bo is in no shape to go. And not only did that man take years of punishment 
in the ring. He took health issues outside of the ring, right? Wasn't he the one who overate himself? Yeah, and, and went di- diabetic. Yeah. yeah, he's been fighting diabetes and everything. Like this is no, nah, this is bullshit. Hold, hold I don't know. Hold on, I'm, Andrew. Let me check with Miguel first. Are we allowed to have Riddick Bow on the show? Sensitivity expert, Miguel Antonio Barragon. <laughs> yes, of course. Oh, Green light. good God. Please. You are all the way in today, aren't you? Huh? All right. Joining us in the studio here, walking out of my closet to sit down at the desk and take over the microphone, is none other than Riddick, Big Daddy, Bo. Excuse me? Did you know that you've uh, been signed up to fight, Riddick? Uh, Tyson. Uh, um, so you're doing all of this to fight Mike Tyson? <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's that because that's about all the words that man can utter. His diabetic lip keeps him from speaking actual words. But, but I'm excited about TikTok or Corey B. Miguel. I am. I don't. I don't even know who that is. I'm just excited. And oh my God, Aaron Carter's going to fight too. How am I not invited to any of these fight cards? I feel left out. Like you are literally at the B and C ring of talent for celebrity pseudo celebrity boxing and i'm putting it out there for this fight card lee honish danny bonaducci too <laughs> no no uh, love? I, I i i i no i'm gonna say no on that one well hey <laughs> let's go to boxing buzz for july 30th as we get four stories closer to the end of the show <laughs> Boxing buzz on Fight News. If you don't know what that is, that's where they just talk rumors. And I just like the fact that this is their cute way to table it. Looks like Canelo plant unification clash is dead. Well, we knew that the minute they said it was dead. But all right. Canelo now needs a new opponent quickly. His traditional Mexican Independence Day fight date. Canelo's team has reportedly reached out to everybody take a deep breath. WBA light heavyweight champion Dimitri Bivol. WBA president Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. Was it really white today, uh, Miguel, or did I at least get in the ballpark? Uh, you, you, you were in the ballpark. I mean, you're a little bit out in left field, yeah, but still, still in the ballpark. Right, cool. And female champion Hannibal Gabrielis will present the WBA light flyweight champion belt to Estran Bermudez on Tuesday. At a, oh, that's I thought it was all part of the same story. Sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, everyone. All good. right. <clears throat> Let's start. I start with you this time, Miguel. Dimitri Bivol, Canelo for Mexican Independence Day. Um, still, mm. what do you think? Uh, well, I'm not sure if we're going to get into another story about this, uh, a couple of stories you know, before the show ends. But uh, from what I've read already. That's uh, a rumor. The story you're talking about is more of a rumor than this oh, rumor. I had to weigh room. my rumors at this moment. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I would not mind seeing this fight, of course, because that's what everybody at this point, everyone is going to continue to hate on Canelo until he finally loses. So then they can say, see, I told you he wasn't shit. Basically, that's what everybody's doing. It's like, oh, no, he's going to have to fight Anthony Joshua at some point. It's like, come, come, relax, fucking relax. It doesn't matter who the hell it is. He's going to get so much hate and he's going to try to he's fight. Everybody never gonna he's, he's, what he's never going to get respect. He's never going to get respect. He's going to fight Bavol. And if he ends up beating Bavol, they're going to be like, no, no, what about better beef? All right. And then after better beef, well, now he's going to have to like, Jesus fucking Christ. If it's not one thing, it's the other. I get it. They already hate the motherfucker. So i rather not see him move up to 175 again. You know, when he did fight Kovalev, it was, you know, a, a, not the killer anymore. It was a different Kovalev. But, you know, whatever, he did his thing. He knocked out Kovalev. Fantastic. But I don't think, I mean, if you look at, you know, Canelo's fucking forehead after that fight, it was bruised up with jabs that he received from fucking Kovalev. It's probably not a good idea to move up to 175, 168. He's comfortable. He's still a short, stocky dude, you know, for the weight division. Usually, um, you know, us Latinos aren't exactly very tall. You know, big, big guys, it's a rarity. So, I mean, come on now, you know, it's probably a bad idea to move up to 175. But if there's an opportunity there and he's willing to take it and it's something that, you know, he feels challenges himself, uh, at some point, it's going to go bad for him. Let's just be honest here. He's going to he's going to go too far. He's going to try to do too much, and it's going to go bad for him. I'd rather him not move up to 175, at least for the time being. But 
he's he's doing it in, in a calculated manner and a calculated risk i guess you can say not going after better be if right off the bat so uh, i i don't know i'm on the fence about this one i would rather him stay at 168 but you know considering fewer fewer and fewer challenges and fewer and fewer uh you know titles out there for him at 168 well i guess he has no other choice at this point uh andrew it it really uh Risk and reward, I think, plays a big factor in Canelo's decision making right now at this point in his career. The problem with the zone and Canelo is he has that nice contract that says they're supposed to pay him upwards of 30 million per fight. Um, they've already been in conflict over him once about the the opposition that he was facing to the money that he was making. Um, yeah, yes, maybe he moves up to 175 and takes on those guys, but. If the money really isn't there and they're asking him to fly over the pond and go do the fight in, in their backyard, then maybe Canelo works a new deal with the zone to take lesser money and fight a title defense, right? Another year drum um, will be coming down the pipeline uh, in the super middleweight division. So that's really what, what uh, Canelo has in front of him right now. I don't see a B-Vol or better B fight packing a Dallas stadium or doing the $20,000 front row seats that Vegas asked for when they have a, a caliber of fighter of what's supposed to be Saul Alvarez. One thing real weird about Saul is he, does he really generate the money of uh, Pacquiao and, and De La Hoya and these other guys that used to fight um, that used to fight uh, in Las Vegas and make 30 million per night, even a Floyd then throw Floyd's name in there. Uh, so that we still don't know on a, on a, any given day, do the movie stars come out and, and, and watch uh, uh, so Alvarez yet to be tested. So I, I really don't know if, if he can do those fights um, with those guys from Europe over here in Las Vegas, he would have to go over there. And uh, that's where that risk and reward comes into effect. We're reaching the home stretch now, down to the final few stories. And it's time to reveal the winner of today's game show. It will either be one of the next three stories or not. And you, the fan, and or one of these guys will be correct. We'll give them one last chance to change their answer. <laughs> and here we go. Andrew Labache, will there be a WBC story in the next couple of stories? Maybe yes, I'm, yes. Uh, De La Hoya and Suleiman have been in bed for a long time. I, I see De La Hoya reaching out for some shiny belts to try to make this fight look legit. Yes, sir. Miguel Antonio Barragon. Um, okay, I have been persuaded, guys. I have been persuaded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, over the course of this show, I have photoshopped a belt of what, or an image of what the belt is going to look like. <laughs> so. In your text messages, you guys will see how yes. exactly. Knowing you, you've been probably <laughs> searching for it too. You would cheat. I um, feel that you would cheat I'm gonna, to get this. I, I, no, no, I, I was honest with myself. I said I won't look it up, but uh, I'm going to have to say yes. They're going to somehow sneak in a belt into that fray one way or another to have those <laughs> three letters. You guys have ever <laughs> played the lot Loteria? The Loteria. <laughs> That's it is, it is, be. I got to send this because this is definitely going on the show. Oh my God. I'm making <laughs> if you guys are really digging the artwork that I do at the beginning of the show, trust me, today's Baracho belt is going to kill it for sure. And the final answer for both of you at this exact moment is. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, oh damn. damn. Yeah, had that carried on the. It was a fun game, show. right? It was a fun game. It was <laughs> a fun game. It was a fun game. That's what you need to think at this moment. It was a fun game, but we do have a Baracho belt artwork with packed on pictures. This is well, I, I do believe Miguel. Miguel just yeah, he just ignited the 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 plan to go start going. The ball is rolling now. Wait until uh, I call this Deloitte show. Is. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys get man. You know, I'm big on manifesting and meditating, so I'm gonna help this out. I'm going to make the show about Oscar and Vitor fighting for the WBC Baracho belt. Uh, I said that very white. Baracho <laughs> belt. I hate it. I hate talking Spanish. I just sound so goddamn white. Um, I'm irritated when people from other countries try to speak American, uh, U.S. English. 
And it seems kind of painful to me when they do it. And I'm, I don't know if anybody else feels the way I do on that topic. Uh, let's move forward because we had a weekend of boxing. Let's talk about some of these fights. Unbeaten junior middleweight, Evan Young Hollyfield, Hollyfield, the Young Holly, Hollyfield, scored a third round KO against uh, Augustin Ciciero, who was 16, 19, and three. Where do you even find a guy like that? Like, is there a book? I feel like it's like they were in Rocky One. Like, there's a book that comes out with just shitty fighters that you can look up with <laughs> insane shitty, records. Shitty club fighters. Shitty club fighters. Hey, you got anybody on the shitty club circuit? Uh, so, he is now 7-0 and with five KOs. Uh, I start with you this time, Miguel. How long before Young Holly, by the way, spelled Y-U-N-G. Oh, got to hate that part, too. Uh, Evan Young Hollyfield. Hollyfield. Young Holly Hollyfield. How long till he gets a title shot? He's currently 7-0. and This is an over-zenders bet. What, what are you setting the line at for this? Um, you know, I, I have to suspect that it's going to be a minute before he does because the, he, the fact that he has his pops in his corner and his pops has way more experience in the business, uh, I, I'm sure he's going he's gonna to try to protect him. You're saying that Hollyfield is coherent enough not to try to <laughs> drain well, his son of money? Remember, he's he's a Rocky thing. He's getting smarter he as broke, he gets older. Right? So he's, you know that's he's true. Yes, yes. The old man He's getting smart old, you know, that, that he's, that's a Rocky, smart, uh, he's you, know, getting smart you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think he's, he knows better and he's going to try to keep his, his young, holy, uh, you know, uh, protected for as long as he possibly can. So it's going to be a while before he even gets close to a title shot. I think. I, I want to believe that he does that head shake that he does. And he's like somewhere in my brain, this is a bad <laughs> idea. You should fight more son, but man, damn, 10 million is 10 million. Uh, <laughs> By the way, the have you ever of- have any of you guys ever seen the movie The Groots? No. Yeah. Oh, what is it called? The Croods. The Croods. Yeah. Remember when the dad? Remember the dad's beating his head? League. Ah, idea. Come out. Come out. I have a. Yeah. I have a feeling that's Evander behind closed doors. Wow. Like, yeah, he's just beating. Again, a father son there. relationship. When he said that, that's the first thing I boxing. thought of was was the crew. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you say? Hey, and then Andrew? talk about uh. Title shot? Well, no, I agree. I agree with Miguel. Uh, I think they hold off. The you know they gotta let him grow. He has no, I, as far as I know, he has no amateur background. He's not a former Olympian, anything like this. Is had so much more going for him um, coming into the professional ranks where they they've got to start his son out slow. And to be honest with you. If they do it correct, they can make millions of dollars just on that. We've seen Chavez uh, do that with his son. Young Chavez Jr. was making a million bucks way before he should have, and and they had a oh, long career of fighting a bunch Andrew. of nobody. No, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Andrew, that worked yeah. out. Yeah. Really. Like, a, no, no, like a charm. Out, no, no, the relationship like didn't. The man. relationship, but financially, financially, <laughs> those guys were oh. doing very good. Very yeah. good. So if if Evander knows how to sell a ticket using his name and it's doing good over there in Atlanta, no, look for his son to keep knocking out people in Atlanta and selling out crowds, casinos. Money <laughs> what, Evander? What are you listening to over there? I got money. I mean, that's assuming that you could understand the lyrics, Evander. Shout out to Evander Hollyfield. Uh, still funny to me, nonetheless. All right, uh, let's talk about Yildrum. You remember Yildrum? Does everybody remember Yildrum? Oh, yes. Well, he was back in action this weekend, and he made a lot of uh, a lot of statements before the fight that he was not a shot fighter after fighting Canelo Alvarez in February. And this was going to be his big return to the ring. And he was going to show everybody. That is until he had the fight. And the scorecards came back. And the final scores uh, of this fight for what should have been basically a very simple European British Commonweight Cruiserweight title between, uh, you, right, uh, wait, uh, Jack Hull. He fought Little Lever. What the fuck is his nickname? Little Lever's Meat Cleaver, Jack Cullen. What? <laughs> That's the dude he fought. Little levers meet. What cleaver, does that even fucking Jack mean? Cullen. Well, let me read the headline. Oh, he sounds like he's a hit man for some spirited models. rounds. Little levers meet cleaver Jack Cullen, who was twenty and two and one with nine KOs, 
scored a unanimous decision over world title challenger Avni Yildirim, who now drops to 21 and 4 with 12 KOs in London at their bubble. Wow. This is just lowering the Canelo stock ever so much. Every time one of the guys he fights then goes, I can't. Uh, so here's the argument. Does Canelo fuck these guys up so bad that the t- next time they fight, um, they just don't look impressive anymore? I could say I can even make that statement about Triple G, who, while he's won, hasn't won Triple G style. I think this is a series of things. Is Canelo so good that he, ba- he basically beats 10 years of boxing off of you, where you're just basically a shot fucked up fighter? I start with you this time, Andrew. Is it Canelo fucking him up, or are they just fucked up fighters? I guess it's the story. The the greatest fighter out of Canelo's country is Julio Cesar Chavez, who used to beat his men into submission before knocking them out, basically. And and two of his fighters, Roger Mayweather and Meldrick Taylor, went on to become champions. Um, And he put big beatings on them. Mayweather was knocked out twice, once both TKOs, once he quit on his stool, the other one, the, the ref stopped. And then Taylor was put in the hospital for, I believe, two weeks after the Chavez fight. Both of them come back to be champions. So, no, yes, the stock drops significantly uh, for you when when your big title defense doesn't pan out to become a, a legend or, or a champion. They just, you know, they just uh, go away. That that does speak. And when you talk historian, uh, uh the history side of your legacy that does your opposition will come up. So yes, your drum does nothing for the argument of Canelo Alvarez's legacy. Miguel Antonio Barragan. Um, I mean, I guess fucks them up to the point where he's giving them their biggest paydays and they just don't give a shit at the, after that. <laughs> I have to say, you know, talking about guys like, My like here, you, you know, Yildrum and uh, fucking, uh, you know, Saunders. It's like, all right, well, biggest payday of career. Cool. Time to fucking, you know, call it I mean, a career. He really fucked day. up Saunders. Like, Let's yeah. be brutally honest well, well, about yeah, Saunders. I mean, he, he didn't. All the way know, out of boxing. Yildrum many favors either, you know, but I mean, still, it's just, you know, when they get that big ass payday and they're like, ah, okay. Because, I mean, to be honest, I, I'm kind of surprised that Yildrum is back in the ring this fucking quickly you know i mean granted it was several months back but i was just like wow i thought he was going to take maybe a couple of years off shit for the payday that he received but i mean he's back in here okay great but did he look you know as as um impressive i don't know i mean is is he even relevant at this point how you know fight news is putting them on these uh, on these articles but I, I think fucks them up to the point where i'm talking about financially giving them a big old payday and now they're like ah eh, let me let me not get up as early to go running next morning all right there you go. That was a good story. That I got way more out of that story than I really thought when I put that story up. Uh, I didn't actually see the angle until I put the story up, if you're wondering how my brain works when I write these stories. Hey, everybody. Andre Durrell returns to boxing and with a victory. You're saying who? Right. That's exactly right. That's how shitty boxing was on Saturday night. Uh, now campaigning as a light heavyweight, the 37-year-old Andre Durrell returned to the ring with a KO win after a 19-month layoff. Durrell now 28-3 with 18 KOs, scored a third-round KO over Christopher Brooker on Saturday night at the Prudential Center, Newark, New Jersey. Durrell dominated the fight, putting Brook down three times. Uh, the time was 2.58. So uh, the reason I bring this up, because it's completely amusing to me, uh, other than the fact that there was literally nobody in the arena to watch this fight, is have we now sunk to the fact that how is Andre Durrell getting any time? Shouldn't he be like a throwaway story at about the same level as young Hollyfield? I start with you this time, Miguel. Andre Durrell, do I really have to tolerate B-level ejected <laughs> PBC fighters like Andre Durrell? Uh, I mean, you, you just you basically was just answered named, your own question. Was he it ever was, a name? Well, this is hold on. This is Andre, right? He wasn't even the Super Six, yeah. right? Am I getting him confused? He was a Super Six, right? Like back in like 2000. Yeah, well, he got beat in the I, first I round, but yes, right, right, yeah, that, that Andre so, Durrell, yes. Okay, so so yeah, that that was uh, his, uh, you know, I don't know, moment fame, in the I sun. That, that was his moment, exactly. His 15 minutes, and uh, I mean, he is still with PBC, so of course they're going to give him, you know, some some air time. So you basically answered your own question there. Yes, you bet. We're going to have to <laughs> see these these B level fighters uh, fight frequently as long as you know PBC puts them on, which they most likely will. Uh, so yeah, I mean, whatever. I, I didn't even realize he fought this weekend. Yeah, right. 
Absolutely uh, the only answer. That's the only answer you needed there. I didn't even know he fought this weekend. You know, it's my, my cousin called me yesterday, and we were talking. He, Is there any fights tonight? I said no. I knew Darrell was fighting <laughs> you guys, but Granados and Granados and, and Ben had been canceled. So the answer was no. There was no fighting on. Well, you're and wrong, Andrew. The the you're bigger wrong. wait, wait. The bigger the bigger yeah. story. Did you guys see the undercard to Pacquiao Spence? No. Mm-hmm. no. You're breaking. That was released. That was released. You gotta look it up. It should be on our feed. I'm sorry, I don't have it for you. I didn't text it over. I know you guys made the bill. And a surprising fight, Lee, that I thought you'd be all over. Robert the Ghost, Ghost Guerrero, Guerrero is returning oh, to the PBC pay-per-view, right? This is how bad it is. Uh, Guess who he's fighting? Guess uh, who he's I fighting? I don't know. Heavyweight contender somebody? Uh, Victor Ortiz. <laughs> What? <laughs> is this 2010 again? Victor Ortiz and yeah, I know, right? Robert Guerrero. Well, Victor so Ortiz damage. was cleared of all this rape charges. I got. Okay. Let me see if I get this fight straight. We're doing the battle of brain damage, right? We're we got a guy on the cusp of brain damage in Guerrero, and we've got a guy with legit brain damage in Ortiz. What are they thinking over there? We need a man to die in the ring to add a little bit of spice to the undercard? <laughs> I don't know how how these two made a pay-per-view bill. Um, you know, the, the Spence Pacquiao it's gotta fight be the will pay for its... Got to be the co-main no, event. No, it's actually Ugas. No, it's actually Ugas, and they, they put Ugas as the co-main because he's going to get the winner. We all know that if Spence wins, he will not be fighting Terrence Crawford. He's going to fight Yugos. So Yugos is a co-main event from what it says on the press release. Um, I forget the young man he's fighting. He's fighting like a prospect that never really blossomed for the PBC. I forget the young man's name, though. But the more the more interesting fight or the interesting fight that I seen was how the hell did Guerrero and Ortiz make a pay-per-view <laughs> bill? Because they'll fight for 10 grand. I mean, that's yeah, my that's only right. assessment of that fight. I mean, they'll they will work for food at this point. There's nobody beating down the door. Uh, Especially Ortiz. Ortiz right. is the one that I mean, Guerrero. At least I always say this. At least Robert made some decent money when the PBC first started. They were handing out some big checks to these these fighters. Um, Robert was a part of that little wave right there. Victor Ortiz, he's the one that's had the, the serious troubles. He's had the legal troubles with the, the yes. I know he was cleared, but he, you know, all Covina's those court, court, own Victor Ortiz. Yes, I know him well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he has court fees, lawyer fees, everything else he has to pay for. And, and uh, he had the one Mayweather uh, showdown, but I don't know if he made, if that translated to him making millions for the PBC when they first started, or if he was already a journeyman at that point. At, is at this least will Robert work for a was... cat scan. I don't even know what this fight's all about. This is there's all kinds of wrong with this fight. Uh, Miguel Antonio Barragan. Uh, I mean, I, we. I, I don't. I don't know. Like, this is kind of the fight that we have, like, on a prelims kind of deal. Like, not on a fucking pay per view card, but you know, uh, understandably, you guys basically hit the nail right on the head. They're gonna, they're gonna fight for food at this point. So it's like, all right, you know, come into the uh, the press room, get some free meals, get some free dinner. You know, like, like the press do. Uh, <laughs> what and, and, and you can do you that? Home. That's that's a, your, you know, that's your, that's your pay. Food. Exactly. That's your pay. Don't expect, you know, get the, get the free parking, get some food, get some nachos, and then call it a day because this is what you're going to get paid for fighting on the card. Lord. Oh, my Lord. God help us. Which takes us to our final story, which I kind of enjoy in a strange way because it would only happen to the PBC. Unheralded late substitution Jonathan, I'm not a cab driver, Rice, who was 14-6-1 with paying KOs, Shockingly stops unbeaten WBA number nine heavyweight contender Michael Coffey, uh, who is now 12 and one with nine KOs in round number five at the Prudential Center in New Jersey in front of a crowd of 12 people for this PVC card. Uh, Miguel, did you flick back and forth to watch any of this? Uh, bits and pieces, yes, like on my phone, but uh, I mean. I, if I'm not mistaken, Rice was uh, plus 700, I, I think it was. Yeah, um, at so, least. 
Yes, so that, that's what I saw. And when I saw that he uh, he won, I was like, holy fuck, there goes another. That would only to... happen to the PBC. So your <laughs> yeah. last minute replacement, a dude mm-hmm. who literally works in a mechanics garage. I don't even want to look up what his day job is. I guarantee there's one. Uh, steps in because of COVID for your heavyweight that you're building up. So you have somebody mm-hmm. in the WBA division. Right. He's already ranked at 12 and 0 with nine KOs. Right. He was ranked. You already did wow. half the work. He's top, right top there. 10. He was top 10. Sheesh. Well, according to them. Right. Uh, you brought in a late sub who fucking beat your dude. Oh, yep. Six so rounds. great. Jesus Christ. Big kiss, Al Heyman. Big kiss. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. You lost a top 10. Oh, so great. So great to an unranked, unheralded, Plus yeah. seven last minute replacement. Oh, so good. So good. And his comment after the fight, mm-hmm. I was ready. I've been ready. I was waiting for it to happen. He finally went off at the fight at 25 to one. Jesus Christ. Jesus, Andrew. Jesus, Andrew. <laughs> you couldn't even probably get action in Vegas on this fight. It was so lopsided. Uh, Andrew, you surprised that Al Heyman shit the bed with a replacement? Um... No, it's happened in the heavyweight. The heavyweights, that's just, this is like the division where things like this could happen, right? We even seen it at the highest level in Madison Square Garden three or four years ago, right, with Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz comes in this overweight, freaking outmatched, everyone thought was a joke kind of a fight. You got you got Anthony Joshua who just looks like he's everything a boxing athlete is supposed to be in the heavyweight division compared to Ruiz, and, and look at how that ended up. So heavyweights... This can happen. Um, so, yeah. Now, you would think that Al Heyman, their matchmakers are pretty good at, at getting these these replacements in. But, uh, unfortunately, on this one, Coffee took a defeat. There you go. That is this week's Fight Net Radio. All two glorious motherfucking hours of it. Uh, Fight Net Radio. It's so Go fucking to- hot outside, Lee. It's so I know. Hot. It's I'm going to put you inside right now. I'm sweating like a pig. I know. I know. We're going to put you inside right now, big man. Uh, <laughs> go to fight that radio. Media. We got to we get Andrew. I kicked my dog down. three times. I, I kicked I the dog that. three times. He's, he's, he's fucking barking. Lightly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, shut the, shut the fuck up. Shut up. That's a cross. Go to fight that radio. Media. Uh, you can follow me. You can follow me. Hey, up, my boy. Fight Net Radio. You can follow Fight Fiend Miggs, who's working on his next epic 24 part series on Gelato. Oh, jeez. That was a good joke. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to add for this week, Andrew? No. I hope soon that these, these COVID uh, what, positive tests go down in boxing. I mean, I. I it's unfortunate that these fighters haven't learned that there's it should be put away for at least a month before your fight. You no going out, no going out into the public anymore. Everyone needs to stay in. We're we're trying to make million dollar fights here, and uh, it's sad that 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 the flu is knocking these things out. And when I say the flu, I mean how they're getting it. You know, it, they're going out in public. They're putting themselves at risk. Uh, I think back in the day, fighters did a good job of, of hiding up in the, the forest or, or hiding in, in, you know, a secluded yeah. area, like big get away from shit. everyone. And, and yeah, only come out when it's time to fight. I think we need to get back to those days until this, this virus, this new virus um, is, is under control. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty bad. Miguel. Uh, no, just uh, you know, looking forward to uh, you know uh, Spence and, and Manny uh, later this month. Um, there's a bunch of other fights in between between now and there, but not really uh, worth mentioning at this point. You know, it will happen. It will happen. But uh, no, beyond that, uh, just stay safe, everybody, please, for the sake of yeah, shit, that would be safe. a good idea. Uh, and I'm not saying that I completely read our audience, but I'm going to say this. I'm going to let my day job intrude on my night job. If you listen to the show and you're in the United States, can I say that? Uh, and you are having difficulty making your payments or the moratorium is now officially affecting you, call 833-969-4673. I will just tell them you listen to Lee, right? It's my company. Uh, I'll make sure that you get with somebody that will help you out. That's my little PSA. There won't be any charge because you're a listener. I will hook you up with an actual person who will assist you uh, as you learn the alternative. Closure because it's actually going to be a very, very, very real thing 
uh, because I've been watching the news since 1 a.m. And it's really, really, really fun. So with that said, are there any fights worthwhile? Uh, we got a thriller fight this weekend. Anybody interested in Michael Hunter versus Mike Wilson? Huh? Chris uh, Algieri making his return. Oh, to the ring. Algieri's back. What the hell? Okay. Algieri's back. Huh? <laughs> He'll also be selling vitamins outside the arena. Uh, and that's it. That's your fight schedule for the weekend. Do we have a UFC card or something? This yeah, not that good of a one. But yeah, like heavyweights, uh, it's going to be an interim heavyweight title. Damn it. Uh, yeah, Damn it. Means I gotta. Are, are we done with the Olympics by Saturday? Like, can we go back to some other? Like, I'll watch baseball at this point, and I really don't like watching baseball on TV. I really don't. Doesn't it's, Mexico play the USA for the gold today. cup? Yeah, today actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch that here. Wow. You yes. both went. Full and, and, I and I don't watch, and I don't even watch soccer. But I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm watching this one. Yeah, I watched this one. Yes, sir. Really? You guys all talked soccer with Sam Navajaro. <laughs> Shout out to Sam Navajaro. <laughs> I stayed out of that one. When it went soccer talk, I'm like, fuck, what's next? Rugby? Uh, we're the yeah, sleeping that's... giant in the soccer world. I, I believe we're going to have an explosion here soon, Lee. We, it's been growing. The sport's been growing here in America for a while. One yes, day we're going to bust out. I mean, we're right there. We're on the cusp. Since <laughs> yeah, Pele. we're going to bust out. That was a good joke, too. Uh, it was. Go to fight. Net radio dot media. You can check out all the shows. You can follow Miguel. You can follow me. You can follow the show. And we actually really do appreciate you all for listening. We hope we made you laugh for a couple of hours and forget about your shitty lives filled with COVID and evictions. I mean, let's be honest. It's kind of a shit show out there. And yeah, so yeah, it's be questioning work again. Yeah, you should. Uh, we need you for the show. I mean, True. No, I'm saying no. I'm saying people are questioning if they have w jobs to go to. Here oh, they again. don't. I mean, they, they don't, Andrew, and that's why you know homeowners who didn't make their payments are up shit's creek here. Yes, and renters are about to be evicted in mass numbers. I mean, that's the reality of the situation. Again, when, when the president, when the president yeah. came out, I think two days ago, Biden, Mr. President Biden, and apologized and said there was nothing he could do. That's when you know it. shit's going to hit the fan here soon. Did you know I got really excited when he did that, Andrew? Does that make me a bad person? <laughs> You've known me long enough to know me in my banker days. The he didn't pay that... me to say that, you guys. He didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, from my business model, Andrew, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I am the Punxsutawney Phil of distressed properties and people who miss payments. It is my time again. So, yeah, I've been on the road for three months. I'm actually taking the next two weeks off. Because I figure I'll be speaking every single day for the next three years. So I'm trying to wow. cool out a little bit before I go to Ohio. And that's where I would have inserted a white joke and a very long white joke. <laughs> and it would have been an extensive white joke about people in Ohio. But I'm not. Because, again, it's like a commitment. Right? I'm trying for all of you white people out there. Does that qualify as a joke by itself, Miguel? Uh, yeah, I'd say it does. Yeah. Mm, well, then I apologize. I didn't mean it to. Well, yeah, maybe I did. Uh, maybe you knows? did. Yeah. Go to fightnetradio.media. And again, if you really do have problems, uh, I will extend my company to you guys and I'll make sure there's no cost or fees for your assistance and I'll make my agents cut down their stuff and whatever. Go to uh, call 833-969-4673 or go to homeadvocates.io if you're having difficulty with any of that. And I mean this to the listeners of the show. Even if you're a rent, call us and we'll find out if you're for you. I'm happy to help out. I'm actually in a position to do it. So everybody be safe. Take care. Very uh, nice. Yeah, I thought it was. I was like really kind there at the end, wasn't I? And I'm recording this. That makes me a dick. Well, <laughs>